Welcome, students, to Saturday Detention. I hope you didn't have any plans for the weekend. Uh, uh, Miss Roundwald, was that a sigh I heard? No. You want another Saturday? No, sir. Mess with the bull, get the horns. So, yes, we are here on this lovely Saturday morning uh, at Sherman High School, or, sorry, or Sharman High School. It's going to be real hard. Uh, we have to avoid some copyright issues. Uh, <laughs> with some uh, individuals who are definitely not representing uh, beloved actors and characters from kind of 1980s teen film stuff. Uh, this is uh, Breakfast Club of the Dead, uh, which is uh, the second of our uh, kind of survive, which is our own game that we created for this channel. Uh, playthroughs. It is a game of uh, horror uh, and I guess teenage self-discovery or something. Who knows? We'll figure out what the, how this goes. Uh, but it is also the uh, kind of loosely part of a uh, larger continuity called Days Past, which is about the end of the world and what happens after that. So this is in the day one frame, meaning that this is the day things start to go bad. And if you haven't picked up on the pun, you definitely are the breakfast club. But breakfast for what? <laughs> we will soon find out. So, hey, let's real quick go around uh, in a circle and tell everyone who you are and also a little bit about your character without violating any, uh, I think, Warner Brothers IP. So, hey, Meg. Hi, I am Megan Amell, and I will be playing uh, Maggie Roundwald today. Um, she is very popular. Uh, she is very wealthy. She's very attractive. Um, and she doesn't really want to deal with anything. And she's very like, everything is too much. And it's just stupid. And she doesn't even know why she's here. This whole thing is stupid. And she's anyway. not good at math. <gasps> no. Uh, which is weird for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so, is that yeah. her is that her uh, truth? Is that she's secretly a math yeah, genius? Yeah, sec she's secretly yeah. She's been faking it all along. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And welcome, Mary, for your first time on C Plus Content. Thanks. Yeah, that's my hey. first time. Um, I'm Mary Droplock and Poppins. I'm not a streamer or anything, but I'm around. Um, and I am Tony Michelle Hall, and I am the Dweebazoid. So I'm smart and kind of nerdy and. I like to do well at school. I'm ambitious and want to, I want to get out of here and I want to do a good job. I'm sure you'll be fine. Hey, Sin. Hey, I'm Sin, our sinful underscore underscore potato. Who I am playing Allie who, you know, just is apparently the weirdo. Got my cat and crunch to prove it. Uh, Capitaine Crunch. Capitaine Crunch. Yeah. Captain de Crunch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Man, yeah. I'm only here because I had nothing better to do, so. Shanks. I am the Shanks Master General, also known as Squid Vicious, also known as Andrew, if you prefer. Uh, I play Milo Esteban, the jock. Uh, he's not very smart at all. But he's very good at sports, fairly attractive, and he secretly loves musical theater just like myself. Oh, I let that out. <laughs> it's fine. I guess it's, not, I guess it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> right, right. So, yes, uh, as we uh, established, you have all been assigned to Saturday Detention in the library here at Charmin High School. Um, and you are... Uh, being observed by Mr. Vernon or Werner, maybe Mr. Werner, uh, who is a salt and pepper guy, uh, black shirt. I don't have a brown jacket because ew, but black shirt, kind of brown jacket, clearly thinks he's like super cool, uh, but also clearly just filled to the brim with rage and resentment. Uh, so yeah, he's not, uh, anyone's particular favorite and he, we all must wonder what it is that he, he did to get detention duty on a Saturday. Uh, as you all filed in this morning, the school is empty. Uh, the more observant of you might have, uh, heard the clanking of 
like maybe a bucket and the swoosh of a mop to let you know that Carl with a K, let's be clear, with a K, Carl the janitor uh, is likely somewhere on campus. But uh, aside from those uh, sh small number of people, uh, you believe you're alone until just before uh, detention is set to begin. Another individual in like, I don't know, like a jean jacket and a red and black plaid shirt tied around their waist, kind of floppy black hair, comes and flops down in one of the desks in the library. Uh, this is Judge Nelson, not anything else. Judge Nelson, uh, who is a, uh, a real piece of bad news. And for those familiar with the system, this is a very small population of supporting cast. Uh, and the characters have a relatively small number of survivor insanity points. So this uh, might get a little brutal a little bit quickly. But so uh, Mr. Werner stands up. All right. No talking. Put your purses and candy and whatever else you kids are up to away. Uh, I need a thousand, a thousand word essay from each of you on who you think you are. And then he plops down the desk, pulls out the sports pages, holds it up between the two, between him and you, and starts reading furiously. What happens? I think I know a thousand words or pages or any of that stuff. This is going to be really hard. This is terrible. Are you saying that out loud? Yeah, I, I'm. I, I I tend to speak out loud. The, my. my uh, the paper, the paper twitches down and he just looks at you. Until you oh. start talking and then pops it back up. Mm -hmm. Well, I immediately pull out paper and just start writing like bullet points, just to outline what my ideas are and like what I could hit on. That would be probably most effective towards him. But then, you know, maybe a little bit true to myself, but I just start furiously writing. Pull out your dog-eared copy of some sort of Toastmaster's Guide to Speech Writing. <laughs> Start outlining I, uh, a three-point paper. Yeah. Yeah. I look over at Mary and I'm like, or not Mary, Tony, sorry. I look over at Tony and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, wow, she's already working on hers. Maybe she can do mine later. <laughs> and I'm putting on my lip gloss. That's it. That's the only thing I'm thinking about. Milo. I'm just doodling. Oh, okay. just I, scribbling. I just, I just struggle with this paper. I, I try to fill out, uh, try to fill out as best I can to come up with a, like a, like a statement, like a, what, what, what's it called? Uh, just a beginning paragraph. Just, but, uh, I don't think the, 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 uh, neurons in my head are firing at all. Unfortunately. Uh, that may be true. Hey, uh, why not <laughs> just to see, just to see, why doesn't everyone act with skill with smart to uh -oh. see how oh, well geez. your paper is, uh, coming along. All right. Let's see what my smart is again. So for Mary, that's roll 2d6, add, uh, your smart, which I think is actually pretty high. Uh, and then oh, I got five smart, five total, five. Yeah. Is oh. my smart? <laughs> you overthought your paper, didn't you? <laughs> it's like five thousand words. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> you oversmarted it. <laughs> uh, right, where is this? Is it. Okay, I'm rolling now. Minus right. three. It's a one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> wow, your paper's terrible. Uh, you immediately <laughs> get frustrated and break your pencil. And it's the only pencil you have. <laughs> uh, Tony has, has pulled out a stack of different colored uh, sticky notes and is like story mapping <laughs> this, this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> like not not making progress towards the actual goal of writing the essay because you're so caught in analysis paralysis. Cool. I, I turn to Allie and I say, "Hey, Ellie, uh, can can you give give me a pencil? I broke mine." Ellie, Ellie, 
Ellie. No. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what did Ellie get on on her starting the essay? Uh, so for the the weirdo, smart is replaced with spooky. Yeah, but it otherwise, in this case, functions exactly yeah. the same. Twelve. Oh. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. And that wasn't because of a double six, right? No, it was two fives with a plus two. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, so that's a full success. Uh, yeah, you are making really good progress. I mean, it's a little emo. It's a little, uh, we'll say, creative. Like I'm standing on the edge of a cliff at night and the cold wind's blowing. No one loves You're me. No one understands me. Why don't I just eat worms kind of situation? Uh, but it's well constructed and you're making good progress. Uh, how about Maggie? I had a nine. Ooh, oh. ooh. Uh, cool. So you are going to uh, begin a good start, but there's a complication. Uh, the complication is that you really need to go to the bathroom. Okay. He's got the paper up. Excuse me. What did I say about talking? Excuse me. What did I say about talking? Um, I have to go to the bathroom and I don't think my Already? dad's going to be very happy if I don't get to go to the bathroom when I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, he... Do you know how much these pants cost? <laughs> he smacks the paper together. He opens up a drawer of his desk. You can hear what sounds like a half full bottle <laughs> rolling around in there, <laughs> kind of shoves it in the, in the drawer, locks it, uh, goes over. Uh, pulls a, a big kind of like wooden bar uh, off of a, a little hook that has uh, a key on it uh, and then comes over. All right, let's go. You're going with me? Yeah. How do I know you're not going to run off? <sighs> Creepy. <laughs> I start walking towards the bathroom. <laughs> cool. So uh, Mr. Werner and Maggie are going to leave. He's obviously going to go in the bathroom with you, but he's going to. No, I know. I just and probably want to, time you. I just want to make him feel like a creep because. Yeah, because he's a creep. I'm like uh, that. <laughs> so that. So we've split the party good. Uh, and that means that uh, Milo, Allie and Tony uh, and Judge uh, can now do some stuff. I'm going to go to the desk and open the drawer to look for a pencil. OK, cool. Yeah. Uh, and we'll say that, you know, he, he kind of tried to, like, this, this is cheap public school stuff. He tried to like flip the little thing, uh, to lock it, but it's just like, you just pull a little bit and it pops open. Yes. And there is, uh, there are a couple of pencils. There's a ballpoint pen. There's a bottle, a uh, half empty bottle of cheap whiskey Ooh. and, uh, the, uh, sports section of the news. I take a pencil and then I take the whiskey and I take a swig out of it. Cool. Uh, you feel something plink on the back of your head. <laughs> and I turn around and I look at it. Like, what, what, what? Why you Bogart man, says uh, Judge. Oh, I, I pass the bottle over to him. Cool. Yeah, so he takes a couple of swigs, uh, fills up, it pulls out a little hip flask, fills that up. Uh, and then kind of uh, passes or, or offers the bottle to Maggie. I'm in the bathroom. Oh, sorry. It passes the bottle to Tony. I just pass it along to the next person. I pass it to Allie. Okay. I go back to writing. Yeah, you don't even lift your head up. You're so fascinated by the, your, your busy color coding. Yeah. Uh, all of your notes. Allie, you are past a bottle of whiskey. What do you do? Allie shrugs, just like, whatever. Takes a swig. Awesome. Well, good. So, teenage. So, most of the party is now potentially getting drunk, which is great. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Uh, so cool. Yes. Uh, so, uh, 
well, the, the camera is watching this happen. Uh, and maybe, maybe a uh, judge comes over and kind of stands behind Allie and watches as you write out and, and illustrate your story. And he's just kind of sitting there. Uh, he pulls out a cigarette and then starts to light it and then realizes that, you know, people will smell it. So he's going to go over, pry open one of the windows and kind of hang out it and start smoking and kind of fanning the smoke because that works in movies. It's anyway, the 80s. People smoke all the time. Probably. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's happening there. So, uh, Maggie, yes, you are uh, led down the hallway to the nearest little girl's room. Uh, and Mr. Werner unlocks it and then kind of taps his wrist. Two minutes, little missy. I roll my eyes like really like like uh whatever and i go into the bathroom and i go to the bathroom but then i just kind of sit in there for a while and i'm looking at myself my makeup and my hair and i'm just kind of like oh, i hate this so i'm just gonna hang out in the bathroom for a second and just kind of like put on some more lip gloss and you know, just kind of really drag it out as long as he'll let me. Um, is there anything in the bathroom of like of interest? That of... sounds like an investigate the situation to me. Yeah, I would like to do that. Um, which one is that one? Roll plus smart, unless you're smart. That's unless your trope is. declares otherwise. I don't think it does. Wait. No, I don't think it does. No. The weirdo. No, for that sure was does, the last but... one I played. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a four. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. Minus one. I got a three. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, cool. I don't see anything in this bathroom. <laughs> uh, well, you lose a sanity point to reflect frustration, at, oh, and, and kind of like at the whole, at the whole situation. Um. Which is, you know, fine. Um, <laughs> and the good news is that you didn't, you didn't, uh, it wasn't a two or below, so it wasn't a spotlight failure. Uh, but yeah. as, as you're, as you're, you know, checking your lip gloss and clearly, like maybe muttering to yourself about all the stuff that you have to do for some upcoming dance or game or some other social like party that you're hosting, you know, we're like, hearing a little bit of your internal my, uh, dialogue, the camera, pulls focus a little bit from your reflection to the surface of the mirror itself. And the, the audience sees blood spatter on the mirror, but Maggie ignores that. I don't see anything. Too focused on, you know, uh, and also probably uh, not wearing your contacts. And you certainly weren't yeah. gonna show up at school wearing glasses. No, absolutely not. I'm so. just like, completely everything's blurry i'm real close to the mirror so close that i can't see the blood there you go yep uh, eventually you hear boom 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 on the door uh it sounds like mr Barnett <sighs> is using that big wooden mallet thing to bang on the metal door time's up missy i'm in the bathroom i'll be out in a moment I have girl problems. Gross. He says. <laughs> <laughs> Just whatever. Come back to the library. Do you need like, I don't know, like paper towels or something? No, uh, I'm fine. Please leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can hear the squeak of his cheap orthopedic shoes. Uh, on the tile floor as he moves away. You have you have successfully grossed him out. Um, nice. So back in the classroom, um, what are folks doing? We've got Judge over by the window. We've got Tony just engrossed in planning a 20,000 word novella. Uh, of... Hmm. Um... I might not be all that uh, intelligent and, and the book smarts and whatnot, but I, I figure I do have a sense of timing at the very least. So I figure that uh, uh, 
is he a principal? Vice principal. Vice principal Werner is going to be back anytime soon, so I, I go over to take the bottle so I could put it back in his desk. Okay, you know, see. I had, I had the crime. All right, so uh, I am going to need a couple. So a couple of things begin to happen. So first, let's go ahead and get you to act with skill with Swift. Okay. To see if you're able to not only like get it in time, but also put it back in a way that like it's not going to be super obvious. Uh, my Swift is plus two. That's good. Yeah. Let's see if I botch the roll again. Uh, I got eight total. Eight total. All right. Well, the good news is uh, that is a parcel success. Uh, you are going to achieve your objective, but there's a complication. Uh, oh. You do. You are going to get the bottle back in, in time. But uh, when you, like, just because you're you don't know your own strength, when you pulled that drawer open, the little hook latch popped up, and oh. you're busy trying to like push it completely closed, but that that latch is still up so you're having a hard time getting it closed so you are distracted trying to like figure out with your vast intelligence uh and mechanical engineering background uh how to like fiddle with it so that it can actually get closed uh in a way that's undetectable uh and that me and tony is distracted so ali is probably looking around and notices judge kind of go huh What's that? Oh, hey, bro. You hear a little bit. What? Oh, come over here. I can't understand you, bro. Is anyone doing anything? I'm uh, still fiddling with the lock right now or latch. Yep. Allie will go see what Judge is doing. Yeah, uh, it looks like maybe a fellow student. Like, I think as your parents were driving you in, uh, maybe like the local track team, or at least a few members of the local track team were uh, like on the track. Like you saw him kind of stretching. Maybe they were setting up some hurdles. And so it's an individual who's in just like a, in some sweats. Um and they appear to be moving uh, closer to the window and kind of reaching out a hand. Oh, you want some of the good stuff? Well, I, you know, I'd say meet me under the bleachers, but uh, yeah, if you got the money uh, and you see Judge kind of reach into the inner pocket of his jean jacket and pull out a little, little piece of little like baggy. All right, man. Come on, quick, before the vice principal comes back. And then the person, hey man, it seems like you already had more than your fair share, but whatever. So he is, he is, he has his, this is one of those windows that kind of opens inward like this. So he kind of has his arm reached out and he's dangling this baggie. Uh, and the individual in the track suit uh, par apparently had a really good workout because there's, a very dark stain going down the front of the sweatsuit. Very sweaty, apparently. Is Allie doing anything? Yeah, no, when the, the sweatiness, it's like, ew, gross. Just walks away. I don't want any <laughs> and part then of you it. Walk away. Awesome. Uh, so, as. Uh, Milo, would you like to try again? Uh, sorry, what, what uh, role would I be doing? Uh, I think in this time you're going to need to act with skill with smart. Because <laughs> you got up there and you got the thing in in time, but the compli- you know, Like, if you want to overcome that complication, you're- You could spend a survivor point to do it if you want to. Nah, smart is gonna- Smart is gonna have to be the- Okay. Let's see what- where we go with smart. So I'm fiddling with this thing and I- Oh, that's not actually, uh, what is that? That's eight. Eight. That's okay. So well, Ele uh, 11 on the dice. You achieve your objective, but there's a complication. So you do, uh, finally realize, oh, I just have to push it with my finger. And so you push it with your finger, you close the thing. You can hear the little click 
uh, and you are just turning to go back to your seat when the door busts open and Mr. Werner is there. And the first thing he sees is you standing up by the desk, looking very surprised. And the next thing he sees is Judge hanging his hand out the window and Judge kind of looks this way at him and it's a frozen tableau for a second. Maggie, you still chilling in the bathroom? Actually, after I heard his squeaky shoes walk away, I think what I did was I like looked out the door, like yep. looked both ways. And then I'm probably going to try. Is there like an office nearby? Yeah. Because I might run and like call my friend and tell her how lame this is. Okay. Sure. Easy enough. Okay. Uh, you will say you, the office is a little bit closer to the classroom, but it's, it's um, like, we'll say like, it's, it's not quite around the corner where you would go to get to the right. library where everyone is, but it's up in that general direction. Uh, okay. But you know, you, you can check and see that and, and listen a little bit. Uh, yeah, as you are approaching the office, I think you hear some thud, 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 uh, something hard against metal. It sounds almost like someone slamming a locker over and over. Am I in the office yet? No, you're approaching the office. Oh, okay. But you hear... Can I approach kind of, kind of down, down almost the way you like came? You down? hear some thud, thud, thud. Can I like look, like can I like look down and see if there's anyone hitting lockers? Because that's weird. Uh, I, you, I can building. tell you what you see is nothing. You could investigate the situation, but uh, but just based on looking down the hallway, you don't see anything. I might go investigate. Okay. Like, not a lot, just a little. Um, investigate is smart, right? Yeah. Four? <laughs> well, that's not going to succeed uh, at all. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to say <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll play with the consequences of, of this. Uh, so you get to the point where you thought you heard it and you don't hear anything. And so you're kind of like looking around and it's just like, is someone in here playing pranks on me? And then you hear a bang behind you and are startled and you lose a sanity point. God, so you're down to one. you almost insane. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You hear there that banging is coming from inside a locker. I'm gonna. I'm going to the library. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, as you as you make your way like past the office, uh, you can hear the banging behind you, and Carl with a K, the janitor kind of opens up the office door right as you're passing. He's got a, a big garbage bag full of obviously paper. Right. Hey, what are you doing wandering around? Oh my God, listen, uh, there is, I think there's like a freshman stuck in the locker or something, but wouldn't that mean he's been here since like yesterday? Anyway, a there's a kid again? down there. I mean, yeah. Hey, at least it was just overnight. Remember that, remember that time when a freshman got locked in for, for all of spring break? My God, what is wrong with this place? Yeah, clean, cleaning up that mess should have got me hazard pay. I'm going to be. Hey, like, hey, why you got a second? Did and try to walk away. <laughs> hey, while you got a second there. Yeah. Let me pass on some random wisdom. You know, you're one of those <sighs> popular kids, right? I, yes. I used to know a lot of popular kids when I went here. And I'm sure you know, uh, not everyone knows this, but I was pretty popular myself. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's well, true. No, it's yeah, true. Cool. I, and I thought, you know, hey, it's only upward from here. 
And people were like, hey, be careful. Don't peak in high school. You got to make sure that you treat people nice and you got to focus on your studies and have a plan for your life. And I was like, nah, man, I'm like the homecoming king and captain of the basketball team. And, and you it's were a the homecoming king. Yeah, I know. Right. But I tell you, I wish I had listened. I wish someone had told me back when I was a popular kid in school that it's not all about popularity. Sometimes hey, it's about your character and your commitment there, to making a difference in the world. There's a kid in a locker. Oh yeah, let me stop uh, dropping weird weird wisdom yeah. on you and go take and a, you the, go care of this deal business. With the kid in the locker, thanks, sir. Yeah, uh, he'll he'll set the garbage bag of paper out in the hallway and go uh, over and rummage around yeah. in a in a desk and pull out a, a keychain. And I go, yeah, I think one of these ought to open it. All right, thanks. Remember what I said though. Yep. Popularity isn't everything. Uh huh. <laughs> like, weirdo. spoken by someone who's never had it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's your future husband. Anyway. Uh, oh no, Carl! <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't have picked Final Girl because you're Dang gonna it. live to <laughs> marry Carl the janitor. Carl. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so as you are approaching the hallway, you hear Mr. Werner yelling. Then you hear judge yelling or kind of screaming. Oh my God, he's got my hand. Ah, ah. What are you doing over there? You get back to your desk. You get away from that window. What do you do, Maggie? Um, I'm probably, oh, that's a good question. I probably I'm going to quicken my pace because I want to see what's going on. Yeah. So you 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 pop in, pop up the door. Uh, you see Milo just kind of sitting down. Uh, well, Milo, do you go sit down on your desk at Mr. Varner's instruction, or do you do something else? Oh, sorry. Uh, I I I basically see the. Uh, uh, Judge Nelson, uh, he's like being hurt, uh, I imagine. And yeah. uh, seen as uh, seems like an opportunity to protect somebody. I go up there and I try to uh, rip his hand from the uh, uh, from the uh, the attackers. Um, All uh, right, that's going to be a mouth, protected. I guess. Yeah, that's going to. Well, you don't know yet, but it's going to be a protected other. That's a roll plus strong. Right. I believe that gives me an edge. Uh, you have edge on that, so roll three and take the two All highest. Right. And I believe it's a plus three. Let's. Take a quick look. Uh, yes, and indeed. and you don't have sciatica uh, or flat feet, so I'm going to say, uh, being very athletic, you're going to get to judge before uh, Mr. Varner does. Yeah. Uh, uh, so... I... And then and then as this is happening, Maggie, you open the door and you see yeah, Mr. Varner kind of walking that direction. Come in, and I'm looking at what's happening, and I pull my lip gloss out, and I'm like, oh, I'm too pretty for this. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put on my lip gloss. What'd you get there, my And life? literally, that's it. <laughs> I got a twelve. All right. Well, good. So that's you. That's a big boy success. Uh, it's a. It is a uh, full success. Uh, so and that means that you are not. Uh, you are not exposed to any kind of danger. And. Judge gets away. All um, right, and I get of. an edge, and I get an edge on uh, future attempts to influence against... him. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, so yeah, you pull him back, uh, and kind of at, in, in the in the jostle, the the window slam shut, sh slam shut. You just see, uh, and these windows are up a little bit higher. So like someone standing under the window would kind of have to jump up to see in. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just see a hand slap against the window and then slowly slide down, leaving some sort of trail. And it's almost like it's trying to grab on to the glass, but can't. Mm -hmm. And then you, you hear a little scrabbling against the stone of the exterior of the school and a little bit of... Ugh. Uh, and then Judge is just like, oh, my God. God, what happened? He bit my freaking fingers off. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. These two fingers, they gone. 
Oh my goodness. He's just like, like squirting blood everywhere. Is Bro, there a phone you... on the desk? No. Oh. I was going to call 911. Thinking it's going to make a difference, I close the window. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you like elbowed the or, or shouldered the window closed and pulled him back. He's like, oh, oh my God, man. He bit my fingers off. He must have been on the PCP or something. What's PCP? Oh, it's awesome, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Here, I got some. Oh, I can't because my fingers. You want to reach inside <laughs> my pocket? You got 20 bucks. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to throw a maxi pad at him. Okay, cool. Uh, for the bleeding. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> so, oh my God. Shut up here. Just put this on it. <laughs> so Maggie walks over, picks up the purse, pulls out a pad and just like pulls off the little adhesive strips and smacks it on. So good. <laughs> we are not playing with health and harm. So there's no health points. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so good. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Werner will dig into another um, another drawer of his desk and toss uh, a bottle of aspirin at you, Milo. I catch it and I give yeah. it to Judge? Yeah, give him some of that. Oh, I, I open it for him because his hand's presently injured. <laughs> He's just and like, then I oh. take out two and then put and it in And choose him up. <laughs> You'll be fine. The nurse is supposed to drop in later this afternoon. We'll send you up there. But for now, get back. And I don't care if you have to write your essay with your left hand. It's a thousand words by end of day. You sit there slowly dripping from underneath this maxi pad. What yeah, happens? We need to go. We need to go look for the fingers. I mean, if we find the fingers, we can put it in ice and then we can reattach it. I mean, now he's never going to have those fingers again. But if we go outside, we could probably find one or two. Maybe, unless it was swallowed. I'm not sure what happened. I was really, outside. really working on this essay. No one is going outside. You are not oh. to leave this campus. If you leave this campus, it's another Saturday. You can reattach fingers? That's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever read a book? Uh, well, I did read the, uh, I did read the, uh, the, the playbill for cats once. It was great. Uh, I mean, oh, no. It's the worst show. <laughs> Shut up. Mm. I, mean, <laughs> I want to just remind you of Starlight Express real quick. I love Starlight Express. So <laughs> it's delightful. Milo starts humming. <laughs> Gimbal Shanks, the railway cat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mustafa. <laughs> So yes, Mr. Werner does not take the amputation of two fingers particularly seriously. So what happens? I feel bad for you, man. You know, it sucks to lose fingers, I guess. Oh man, I'm so high right now, I can't even feel it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so over all of he, this. He, 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 with one hand, reaches in and pops out, pulls out some sort of black pill and takes it. What was that? I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, uh. So, what happens? Um, uh, are we I get, go ahead. No, 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 I was just going to be like, are we sitting back down? Or we're acting like it's no big deal. He just lost some fingers. M Mr. Mr. Werner is acting like it's no big deal. Of course, Mr. Yeah. Werner is probably super wasted. So. Oh, yeah. He's he's well, for sure been day drinking like before you guys should, showed up. <laughs> so, yeah. I really feel like we should probably like call a doctor or at least the nurse uh, or else your daddy will probably sue because you got mental trauma from watching well, someone get I'll their fingers what, ripped off if those were my fingers it would be your head if those were your fingers maybe you'd spend more time cracking the books instead of crap cracking that lip gloss <sighs> whatever fine 
Well, since since you got the run of the place, just why don't you go to the office and make the call? I got to stay here and watch these miscreants. I don't want to go there by myself. There's freshmen in lockers. What? Someone come with me. Uh... I'll go with you. I'll go with you. We really need to make this call because otherwise he's never going to have his fingers oh back God, again. Great. I really think we should go look for him. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, Let's we can go. do that after we call. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, Tony, you're in charge. What? Suppose. Tony's a year younger than me. Yeah, but Tony's going places. <laughs> Tony, true, right? Tony hasn't already peaked sophomore year. So what? Is, is this a theme? What is going on? Carl was talking to me Have about it the other day. To Carl? Yeah, I figured. <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? God, you're obsessed with me. Stop talking about me. <laughs> T T Tony's future isn't uh, to be uh, the wife of a used car salesman. So, so, all right. Keep it quick, Tony. No roughhousing, right. no horseplay. Fine, let's go. All right. <laughs> so Tony and Maggie head back to the office. Dang it, I really um, wanted the horseplay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Mr. Varner, uh, uh, I, I got to go in the supply room for a second. And you hear him kind of fumble around in that drawer. Then he kind of has a hard time opening. And he's like, gotcha. <clears throat> and you hear it pop open with that clanking, clanking. And he looks up to make sure no one's noticing. Kind of picks up the trench coat that he was wearing when he came in and kind of puts it over the drawer and then pulls something out and then wads it up under his arm. Yeah, I, I, I got to go check something in the supply closet real quick uh, and closes it leaving Milo and Allie alone in the library with the slowly bleeding judge. So, uh, yeah. Uh, which scene do we do first? The hallway or the classroom? The library? Well, I say you go library first because I have to use the restroom. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, library, what's going on? You are now without supervision. I go, I go to Allie, who I've been calling Ellie this whole time. Uh, that's a, that's a different like, zombie IP. <laughs> Absolutely. And I ask her to help me with uh, just, just the, my, my beginning paragraph. And it's like, I, I don't know what to do. It's like, I, it's, it's like I try to think of something to say. And then I'm like, it, nothing comes up. It's like nothing happens in my, bra in my brain. I can't see anything. Can you help me, Ellie? <laughs> <laughs> I just sit there. Just write what's in your heart. Okay, just start writing words, and eventually it will make sense. Right. Just write what's in my heart. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to write what's in my heart. Jellicle cats. Yeah. Jellicle can and jellicle do. <laughs> All right. So I, after interacting, it's like, thanks a lot, Ellie. You're a huge help. Revelation. So Revelation. You're, you're going to go sit back down at your desk and start. With renewed vigor, I'm going to uh, roll, I guess, roll smarts again to get back sure. on my essay. Sure. Sure. Still <laughs> minus three. Uh, well, Whoa! what'd you I got get? An eight. Uh, eight on the dice. Sorry, 11 on the dice, eight overall. Oh, well done. Uh, yeah, so you start to make pretty good progress on I, I... who you actually are. Uh, so which, which, uh, character in cats are you using as an allegory for your own life? I've always felt like I, um, I, I, my, my, my heart always yearned to be Alonzo, who is the person who actually sang Mr. Mistopheles. Okay. I just want to be the one to sing that song in particular. Like I, I related to what I did here at school. It's like, you know, I feel so guilty and I think Alonzo would be oh, so, oh, so disappointed in my behavior. And <laughs> it would be terrible if, if he found out about this. Awesome. So I start to feel really gu guilty. Awesome. I, 
I guess at this time I'm gonna pick uh, Ali as my or well I call her Ellie, but Ali is uh, the my my guardian at this Award. point. Because I, yeah, because she helped me so much. I turned to uh, Ali and I just big thumbs up, big smile. Awesome. And as you do, because you got a partial success, uh, you break your pencil again. Ah! But uh, sorry, uh, the the the, uh, the vice principal went to. Uh, he he's literally so behind so uh in behind his desk or behind the desk uh there's a blackboard because sometimes this is used as a classroom i don't know um and like there's a globe and some pull down maps and all the kind of mid 80s classroom stuff uh an old tube tv on a cart with like a betamax underneath it uh and then behind that is a door with one of those like frosted glass panes that is a storage room where like cleaning supplies and uh other stuff that you would need for the library and for presentations um like overhead projectors and that whatever that plastic film is that people used to draw on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to use one of those once in my oh, career. Right. It was weird. Uh, so he, so he's he's probably oh, only memory. about fifteen feet from you, but there's a closed door between you and him. All right, uh, I'm gonna go for the desk again just to get a pencil. Okay. Yes. Yes. Rogers White uh, acetate. Acetate. I, I mean, obviously the booze isn't in there, so I can't get into too much trouble. Yeah, and he is now uh, like fully broken that lock, so it's not it's not hard for you to get that. So you are at the front of the room. Uh, as you kind of move behind the desk and start scrabbling around and grab maybe a couple of pencils since you have a tendency to break them, uh, you enough. look up and you can see Judge is like kind of twitching in the back of the row of desks. Kind of oh man, eyes rolling back. There's a little bit of Ugh, coming out of his mouth. You all right there, Judge? Uh, uh, he says hmm. oh man that stuff must be kicking in <laughs> <laughs> right he kind of goes uh. <laughs> uh and then he kind of uh, uh, and then slumps man or that, that a, guy is, is juiced as heck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for a few seconds. And then uh, while you're, you're still kind of having this interaction, uh, he slumps and is quiet for a few seconds. And then he just kind of stands up in the desk kind of clumsily. And uh, it, these are the like single, single piece desks with the little arm and the solid work surface kind of stands right. up and it, it, catches on him a little bit and it almost dumps over uh, and he kind of stumbles but is able to extricate himself from it and then the eyes roll up and kind of sort of focus on Allie who is the closest to him and then he begins reaching out with that bloody missing fingered hand toward her going Ugh. so Cutting back to Maggie and Tony in the hallway. What's happening? Uh, we're going to go towards the office. I'm assuming that I saw uh, Carl with a K coming out of. Yeah. Because I'm assuming that's the nearest phone. So. Yeah. So you come around the corner. You make the left uh, into the long hallway. The office is just a few doors up on your right. And you see, mm -hmm. can see down the hallway where Carl has gone to where you heard the freshman in the locker. Mm -hmm. And he's just trying. All right, buddy, just hold on a second. Did I ever tell you about the time of like when I got stuck in a bad situation and I thought that everything was hopeless and what I did was, you know. Uh... And I'm like, oh, God, I, I <laughs> grab, I, I like slide into the thing and I grab Tony's arm and I pull her in and I'm like, don't let him see us. Yeah. He'll just talk to us about like being popular. Trust me, it's awful. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure it's terrible being popular. I would totally know. Oh my god, I know. Oh, right. Oh, you're making a joke. Okay. So, so as you as you uh kind of scamper into the office and close the door so as to not attract Carl with a K's attention, uh the camera focuses from that door closing back down the hallway. All right, there you go, buddy. And then you see the 
him you see him pop open the locker and it's a long shot right so he's like down framed by the hallway and then you see a small form just leap out at him <clears throat> grab on to him he he stumbles back he hits the far row of lockers and is just trying to fight ah ah and then we hear like ripping noises uh and then the camera focuses back to the interior of the office what's happening did we hear it uh you could give me a investigate okay <laughs> that's smart hey you might be good at this yeah how many do i roll so i just it's, rolled 10. yeah it's 2d6 uh um, okay and plus smart plus i got 10. Smart. Ooh, so that is a full success. I rolled a 10 also. What? You both got full successes? Well, I got an 11, but I have a minus one because I'm not smart. Good. I'm Just, really smart, though. And if, yeah, of, smart, of course, though. If, you had, if you had rolled up another fail, you would have lost your final sanity point. I'm like, this is insane! I'm out of here! <laughs> I'm done. Uh, just, I'm already I, pretty insane. <laughs> in, in this scenario going losing your last at any point can also just mean that you're over it and are going to try to right. leave uh <laughs> a la Fer ferris bueller's day off uh so cool so you both get a full success um so the good news is oh but you can't because you're not down any survivor points um you would regain it uh i should make that a regain a survivor point i'll be nice and we'll do it rules is written you each gain a survivor point not that Great. maggie needs it uh mm -hmm. so i get all your survival points <laughs> so <laughs> what kidding. you so you both do hear some sort of scuffling going on in the hallway uh it's quite a ways down and you can decide whether you want to react to that or not uh but you do find uh two things that will be useful to you to help you survive so in the confiscated uh, gear basket. Uh, I'm going to say you find a knife and some brass knuckles. Are the brass knuckles pretty? Yeah. Or like cool looking? Yeah. Okay. You take the knife. I'm going to take these brass knuckles. Okay. They look really nice with this actually. I kind of do. Thanks. Yeah. What's your name again? Tony. Right. Hi, Tony. Yeah. We've had a lot of classes together. Oh. Like a lot. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. yeah we I'm did just a group project names. together like last year, too. Oh. Well, in I'm my just, house. I'm, oh, right. Oh, right. With the one ply. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're one ply Tony. Okay. Oh, right. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about that debacle. Oh, I love that. Oh, to be reduced to one ply Tony. <laughs> yeah, man. I was I was one ply Megan growing up. That's how I know this stuff. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so you, so you, can I call nine one one? Yes, you hear the scuffle. Oh, but listen, you can pick up. You can certainly pick up the phone. Look out that door. Shh. Look out that door, and see if that creeper is gone. Okay. Don't attract him here, though. I do not want to get into another conversation with him. Okay. Also, okay. I'm gonna call nine one one. If you nine one one exists, right? it does because it was invented in the sixties, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. It's um what do you there's a number for it what oh that's a joke okay and i go to the phone <laughs> <laughs> all right okay i try and peek out the door as discreetly as possible okay give me uh act with skill with swift okay or sneak oh no sneak you're right sneak? thank you okay i got eight okay so that is a partial success <laughs> Um, so you don't attract attention, but there's a complication. Hmm. I'll figure out the complication in a second. So yes, 
you you slowly peek out uh and you see carl with a k uh it looks like he's taking a break he's kind of leaned up against uh the wall a row of lockers is he doing anything or just looks like he looks like he's taking a nap oh okay maggie he's just taking a nap i guess he was <sighs> tired are you kidding me he is so lazy this is why the tampon machine is always out in the bathroom <laughs> maggie says this so. as, you're, as you're hitting the hitting the 911 and you pick up the phone and you hear <laughs> i do that thing they do in movies yeah hit the whole thing nope it's not working. Do you want to try? Uh, maybe I put the wrong number in. Yeah, let me try. So I try the phone. Yeah. Same result. I think the line's disconnected. Oh, great. We're stuck here forever. Is there no phone? Do you know? Like, have you seen one in a teacher's office or anything? No, I don't even like teachers. I don't go in their offices. I mean, well, classroom, but what about like the teacher's lounge? Do you think there'd be one in there? I do you know where it is? Do I know where it is? What I know? I'm going to say there's a kind teacher that sometimes lets you eat lunch in the teacher's lounge so you don't get bullied. Your Spanish yeah, teacher. Yeah, I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. We, we, yeah, very familiar with it. <laughs> uh, we, we cut to uh, like a Wonder Woman lunchbox with a piece of masking tape with Tony written on it that's that's kept on top of the little mini fridge. Oh. Okay. Weird. One of the teachers has your name. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, that's mine. So it what? is it is uh okay, complication. Well, uh so you didn't attract attention, but to get to the teachers lounge, you have to go past where uh Carl with a K is uh, snoozing in the hallway. Okay, just to get really there, we have to quiet. go by him. So we're gonna just, yeah, we'll have to be just really quiet. Yeah, I can do that. I'm very sneaky. Okay. I have, I, I'm not, I'm not sneaky. I have a negative one sneak. <laughs> cool. But I think I'm really sneaky. <laughs> thanks for the major boon there, Pat. And thanks everyone else for boons and pains. All right, cool. Yeah, the act of skill sneak. I got a six. Oh, I got a I'm one. Not... <laughs> I'm not sneaky. Whoops. So, so yeah. Just made the boom. Uh, minor bane. Assuming we have one. Oh, I thought we just got a major boon. We did, but I'm gonna. Uh, if we have a minor bane or even a major bane, I'm gonna spend it to lock that result in. Yeah, we have a minor. <laughs> you can use. Yeah, so we have uh, one major boon uh, and one minor bane. So I'm going to use the minor bane to knock that down to a zero for Tony. Oh my God! Oh no. And at a one, it was a already three. a spotlight. It was already a spot. Sorry, sorry, knock it down to it. You said you had a three, so knock it down to a two. Well, no, it was it was a one because I have a minus two sneak. Okay, so knock it down to a zero. Mm -hmm. uh, it was already a spotlight failure, but now it's it can't be overridden by any boons or other shenanigans uh so uh you guys go sneaking uh maggie's just popping her chewing gum that's probably my loud. heels <laughs> and, you, and your little kitten heels are clacking on the on the floor uh but you're so busy focusing on like not making noise that you aren't paying attention to the soda maybe ketchup maraschino cherry juice something the oh, spill yeah. that is in the middle of the hallway uh and while maggie is still making some noise uh and not paying attention you kind of step into it and and slip and slide a little bit and go oh crap uh tony being uh nice uh reaches out to kind of like like grab you so that you don't fall uh, but then in that process overbalances and goes smack down onto the floor and knocking the wind out from under yourself. 
uh, and you are now covered in cherry juice or whatever. Uh, as this happens, uh, the camera cuts over. Uh, and of course, you're you're trying to grab on to Maggie to prevent yourself from falling. So Maggie's being toppled, but not quite falling over. The camera really like quick focuses in on the s sleeping Carl with a K, and then the head lolls up, and we hear a. Uh, this is like three feet from you. Okay, back to the classroom. No, oh, geez. <laughs> So Judge Judge Nelson uh, yes. d is, well, to our eyes, really doped up. Really and... doped up, and he's making his way uh, over to Allie. All right. Allie's like, ew, gross, get away. <laughs> yeah, just kind of swats at his the stumps of his missing fingers as he tries to grab you. What is Miley doing? Uh, feeling very protective of Ali, uh, Ali after uh, she helped uh, help me with my essay. It's like, hey man, you you should probably step back away from her. And I'd like, uh, I kind of try to interject myself between uh, uh, Judge and Ali. Sounds like a protect to me. All right, that's that's my good skill. Uh, I believe this is my edge again. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Plus three. Oh, hello. That's uh, 14 total. Oh. Spotlight success. Fantastic. So. Uh, I my spotlights. Yes. So you can. Uh, you're already at plus three for strong, right? Yes. Uh, so you can't add one to that trait. Uh, would you like to. Uh, you should probably gain a survivor point. Because I no one's so. missing any sanity in the room currently. Right. So so the camera really, like, this is a pivotal moment. So so how does this situation resolve in such a way that increases the likelihood, at least that you you survive, and potentially Ali as well, uh, your ward? Probably by incapacitating. Like, it, I'm, I, I'm assuming the situation escalates somehow, like, while I'm trying to interject myself. Like, judge tries to, like, uh, physically attack uh one of us at some point would that yeah. be the case yeah all so, right one well, good i'm i'm having absolutely none of it so i i basically go because i'm really good at wrestling because that's kind of what i do i'm an amateur wrestler uh you know division one or whatever <laughs> i i basically slip back behind him put my arms on his waist while the desk is still on him and i full-blown german suplex him to the to the ground and then hopefully he rolls back in such a way that he's he's sitting in his desk yet again or or we'll say pinned underneath it so so you you suplex right. him and then you, we hear a really sickening crunch uh and as his head cuz he doesn't in any way move to protect himself as his head hits the side of something uh, we hear a cracking sound um and just like black gunk starts to leak out he's still uh, uh but in struggling with you and struggling to get at you or Allie, he kind of pulls one of these heavy desks over on himself so he is at least temporarily pinned well well that's what you get when you mess with the uh, bull horns you get you get the you get the bull he, yeah. he he looks at up at you and uh, as one of his eyes kind of slowly slides out of the socket and just kind of hangs oh, there on geez. his cheek. Oh geez, I think I I, I turned it on too much. Some, yeah. I, it's all right. Sometimes I'm in fifth, sixth gear all the time. I think I need Allie and Milo to deny fear. All right, what stat is that again? It's serious? Uh, it is serious unless you're unless what you're my uh, trope defines otherwise uh let's see spend a sanity point no nah, no i think i'll just do the straight roll yeah which man oh no it's um it's a three <laughs> well, so it's not great but it's not a spotlight failure it is not a spot. Uh, so you panic and lose a sanity point and are going to take snag on all actions in the scene. 
uh, until yeah. you until you successfully deny fear, and that includes snag on attempting to deny fear. So you could say, I want to I want to try to like clear my head and act rationally, but so you got to deny fear again with snag, and you're gonna take snag on everything you try during the scene um, until you successfully deny fear. What did Allie get? So deny is my snag. Yep. So I, I oh. rolled three and took the two lowest. So the two lowest are a three and a two. So five. So that's five. Uh, and what in your series is a zero? Yeah, my series is a zero. Okay, so uh, same thing for you. Uh, you are going to uh, lose a sanity point and take snag on all actions until you successfully deny fear, which means technically you have two snag on deny fear now, uh, which is great. It just means that if you get edge, it gets negated until you're able to stack it up to two. So yay, you're probably going to have a fun afternoon. Hey, uh, back in the hallway, as Tony is wriggling around in, on the slippery floor, kind of grasping at Maggie's... Um, skirt or something like that probably getting whatever this stuff is all over maggie's clothing yeah i was wondering if i could uh melodramatically whine about this and someone else's misfortune and make it fully about myself to regain a sanity point sure okay oh my god this do you know how much this outfit oh my god you're so clumsy I'm sorry. This is no, there's nothing these on the shoes floor. will never just, be the same. Can we just? What is this stuff? What did he like? Was he cleaning up a spill and then he just fell asleep? This is crazy. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the freshman was like covered in ketchup in the locker. There was a freshman stuck in the locker and Carl let him out. Are you sure? Because all the lockers are shut. I didn't see anybody walk away. Uh, Listen, as, I as you know. as you kind of like are still like on the ground, you look over in that direction. You can see that one of the lockers is ever so slightly open, and there is some sort of reddish fluid slowly <laughs> dripping out of it. Uh, when yeah, see? when Carl with a K lunges at both of you, the first thing I'd like you to do is to deny fear. Ooh, I can deny with social. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. You have Wait, full on main character syndrome. Um, eight. Okay. Oh, I think I have an edge on that. Because you're super smart. So do I use smart for that? Uh, no, it's still serious. Serious. Okay. And I roll three. Yeah. Three and take the two highest. Okay. Okay, I got 12. Ooh, well done. Not like... Yeah. Yeah, 6 plus 2 plus 2. So uh, you are... You can act normally. Um, no no penalties to anything that you do, and you don't lose any sanity. Uh, for Maggie, uh, you can act normally, but you take a snag on your next action. And the next action both of you need to make is to escape danger. Escape danger is swift. You must spend you must spend the survivor point first. Okay. And then roll plus swift. And Maggie is rolling with a snag. That means I only get one dice? No, it's uh, three die, take the two lower. Take the two lower, that's what it is. Okay. You got five. Oh no. I also got five. <laughs> Cool. Sure, we're surviving this. So, <laughs> we can introduce Mary uh, to Banes and Boons. Uh, so, Banes are a thing. That, so, these are currencies that the that chat has uh, to uh, give you guys helpful things or to give me things to torture you with. So, we currently have at least one major boon. Uh, and a major boon can allow you to reroll up to all of your dice, if you would like. Given that failure on escape danger means 
you are doomed, you might want to spend that. Maggie, however, has some other options on how to survive. So, Mary, would you like to claim our major boon? Sure. So cool. I just re-roll? Uh, you don't, you can reel up to all dice that you rolled. Like you don't, like if, like if, say for example, you got you a four and a one, one, you might want to keep the four and then just reroll the one. Okay. I don't remember what I got. I'll do two new ones. Yeah. Yeah, you I only got a six. two, so it couldn't have been good. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, uh, well, that, that is gone. We'll see how this turns out. We don't have any other boons? Uh, oh, man. No. Mary, no! All we have is a major bane. Cool. So, uh, Maggie, how are you avoiding immediate doom? Um. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to just, I don't know. What are my options? I can just can't I just take can I just take Tony's points? Yeah, you can you can take one of Tony's survivor points and then and then I still have three survivor points. Oh yeah, then just spend another one. What uh yes, spend another one. Okay. Actually I'll allow both of you to spend another one. To what kick it up mean? to kick it up to a partial success. Okay. Cause why not? Because that's a thing you can do with survivor points. Cool. Yeah. So uh, you both now have a uh, partial success. Uh, so I'm going to say, uh, Tony, you need to uh, pick a physical trait and add snag to it. This is permanent snag. So strength, swift, sneaky. I'll do strength. Cool. Uh, and Maggie, I'm going to need you to spend two sanity points. I have zero sanity points. <laughs> Excellent. So what happens is uh, Carl with a K, who's been napping three feet from you, as you're having this argument about the relative cost of your Ralph Lauren pink dress and your whatever shoes. I'm so mad. Uh, and as Tony's been wriggling around uh, on the ground, lunges at both of you, uh, gets a really good hold on Maggie's leg. Uh, but Maggie is able to struggle free. His hands are slippery for some reason. Maybe he was in the midst of cleaning up this spill. Uh, and then just like you're able to pull your leg out and then your little fold over white socks with the little bow on them mm -hmm. and your little heel comes off. Uh, and then you just take off running. Leaving Tony there. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> by herself as uh, Carl reaches forward towards you as you're struggling away, kind of grabs a hold of one of your legs as you're kind of trying to crab crawl back and down on it. You are not dead. It's probably fine. Cool. So that's what we're seeing. Uh, and then uh, back in the classroom. Ellie, I think I, I think I really hurt him. I think he's really messed up. We need to call we need to call the police or something. Uh, sorry, I mean to call a doctor, not the police. We shouldn't call the police. <laughs> that, would, that would be bad for me. Mr. Varner pops out the door, looking a little bit wobbly. I thought I said no horseplay. What's going on out here? Uh, the. Uh... Judge fell over and uh, knocked his eyeball out. Uh, he's going to kind of sway wobbly over that direction, kind of look and... I think he's on something. Squint his eyes, kind of go, gross. I get his eye back in there or something. 
Uh, I don't think I know how. He's, he's gonna kind of like heavily sit in one of the desks. I'm a vice principal, not a nurse. I think he's, I think if I tried to put his eyeball back up, he'll he'll try to bite me. Sounds like a you problem. You want another <laughs> Saturday? No, I don't want another Saturday. Get his eye back in then. Uh. <laughs> All right. I assume I have a belt of some sort. Yeah. Just use so a pencil. I, I take my belt, I wrap it around his head so it's like uh, gagging him, preventing him from biting, and then I try to put his eyeball back in with my bare hands. Okay, I think I need you to escape danger. That's this swift. Is, this is a plus also, swift. Also, y'all need to deny fear and roll sanity. You're struggling. <laughs> what is you're most, putting what, his eye back well, in with your hand. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. We'll Actually, no, you're that. right. I think that's that's only fair. So first, okay. deny fear. Of which I'm. Am I? Do I have a snag in that right now? Yeah. All right. I'm going to spend a survivor point to make it. Uh, give it an edge, which cancels it out. So yeah. I, I just roll normal. And did I fear was what's that serious? serious. I think uh, minus one. Ooh, I, I did a five. <laughs> did we just get some? Did we just get some uh, major banes. We got, we got, we got one major yeah. bane. Okay, I'm gonna reroll. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna use that, and I'm gonna reroll both of them. That's oh, two sixes. Yes. So oh. eleven. Two sixes, even regardless of what the numerical result winds up being, is a spotlight success. Yeah. So you have successfully denied fear, which removes the snag. Uh, and I'm going to say that you're you're wrapping. I'm going to say that not only do you wrap, like, like just the eye back in, you then wrap the belt not only around his head but also around the uh, leg of one of these desks. To All just right. kind of hold his head in place as he's trying to <laughs> at your fingers, but you do not get bit. How did uh, Ali do on the deny fair? Oh, I didn't roll it yet. You better, because this is real freaky. Thank you for the major boon. Yes. Oh, Emmy, yeah. for, Emmy from Minnesota. Let me go ahead and use that. So because I technically have two oh, sorry. snags on it, oh, snaps I rolled it twice. So I have a set of six dice to roll. So they're, the outcome is the same. So it's a three and a four, oh. which is a seven. Okay. Okay. Wait, that's a success, isn't it? It's a partial success. Yeah. So uh, let me scroll back up. Uh, so uh, you act normally, but take a snag on your next action. So you aren't super freaked out. And thanks to Milo, uh, the immediate threat has passed. Uh, and Mr. Varner says, good job. Probably saved us a lawsuit. Get back to writing your essay. I need to go. I think I'm doing. I think I'm doing really well on my essay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Verner. Uh, All right, I, I need to go back I, to the supply room. <laughs> All right. And then just kind All of right, slams the door there. behind. <laughs> He's the so, so Mr. Verner is going to be the one that survives this whole thing. Yeah, yes. basically. So Maggie just takes off running. Um, Deuces. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to say, uh, you run to, uh, the gym, which is attached, uh, and kind of slam the door behind you. And it's like, that, that was completely unbelievable. You're like looking down at your dress. You're like limping yeah. because one of your shoes is gone. Everything is awful right now. Your outfit is ruined. You can feel your <laughs> mascara running. Is this a new scene? Can I have a melodramatic outburst? A hundred percent. I can't take it anymore. My outfit is ruined. My sock is missing. These shoes are so expensive and I don't think I can get them. Oh, they were so, oh, special designer. Everything's awful. My whole life is ruined because of this 
stupid strawberry jam. <laughs> as as Maggie slides down the painted cinder block wall of the <laughs> of the gym to bemoan her fate, uh, you aren't really paying attention until the basketball rolls and kind of bounces against the shoe on the one foot that still has it. It has a greasy handprint on it. And there's a trail of dark substance behind it. This school is disgusting. We need more than one janitor, people! Uh. (laughs) Crawling out from under the bleachers is a freshman. Which one would think would be gross enough. Yeah, that's terrible. But then it kind of sees you and on all fours rapidly scuttles towards you (laughs) and launches itself at you. I think that is probably escape danger. Okay. Go ahead and spend that survivor point. Okay. Uh, ooh, 11. And what do, am I doing it with? Uh, that is going swift? to be swift. Uh, 12 then. All right. So you are able to roll out of the way. Um, oh, wait. You're insane. Yeah. Well, no, I have one sanity point because I just had a vent session to myself. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, yes, you have one sanity. So you roll out of the way uh, and the freshman smacks into the cinder block wall behind you. And you can hear the snap of their neck as their head turns almost completely around. Their body is plastered leaned up against the wall, but the head is still looking at you. Uh, go ahead and drive fair for me. Wait, what am I doing? Denying fear. <sighs> and okay. there's a little bit of a Linda Blair moment going on in the gym. Yeah. Oh, no. Seven. Oh. <laughs> well, that is a partial success. Uh, so you get to add, act normally, but uh, take snag on your next action. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to, well, is the thing moving anymore? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's still, oh, it's yeah. still coming at me. Oh, yeah, okay. it's scrabbling up against the wall to push itself away. Um, I would like to take the one shoe that I have left. Yes. And just start hitting it with it. Because is it by me? Yeah. Like, it's right next to me, because I just rolled out of the way, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I want to just hit it with my shoe while trying to, like, get myself up so I can run. But like while I'm on the ground, because I, I just take my shoe off because I already lost the other one anyway. And I'm just I've already resigned myself that these shoes are I'm just going to have to get them remade or something. It's going to have to be my birthday present. And then I think that's going to be another yeah, escape. So I just start hitting them with. It. Yeah, you're 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 going back into danger. Um, OK. Wait. Escape would be my survival point. Yeah, spend another survivor point. And roll but with, it's going to put me at zero. Oh, whose survivor point do you want to steal? Um, I'll steal Allie's. All right, Allie loses a survivor point so that Maggie can escape danger. <laughs> so does that mean I still have one? Uh, so yeah. No. Did you have one before or were you at zero? I have one right now. Okay, so you can spend that. That would make me go to zero. So, okay, you, so, so Allie, you're Allie's fine. Yet. Yeah, but okay. now but now you're at zero. Right. So okay. every time you need to escape danger um, or otherwise spend a survivor point, it's going to be someone else's. So, we so gotta... is that swift again? Yeah. Or strong? Does it's it matter? Swift. It's swift. This one then. Okay, so that's going to be six. <laughs> now would you like... Uh, so you can escape at cost. Um... You're taking a snag onto knife here going forward and can either spend an additional survivor point, in which case this you're going to have to steal it, spend two sanity points, which will make you insane again, uh, or choose a trade and add snag for all future moves to represent an injury. Um, 
I'm going to say you can't choose the third option because an injury in this case means infection. So you, right. and you have to survive because you're the final girl. So you get to choose to steal someone's survivor point or go insane again. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to steal survival part from, from Allie. All right. So Allie, you just Sorry, lose, that, Allie. lose that survivor point. Uh, so are we going to be farming survival points uh, for, for Ma yes, Ma Maggie? Yes, That's the, that's the whole like point. I'm like tank and you guys got to heal me. <laughs> that's, the, that's the point of the final girl is that when they run out of survivor points, they start stealing it from other yeah, people. Yeah, the dumber I am, the more faster you guys die, basically. Great. So you're at one... You're at one sanity point and zero survivor points, right? Zero survivor points, correct. Cool. So yeah, you just start, and you're close to insane. You're not out of control, but you just right. start smashing this thing with your heel and, and eventually just like catch it right in the eye socket uh, with the heel and it kind of sticks there. It's still moving, mm. uh, but you, in your insane frenzy, <laughs> make a really disgusting mess uh, so tony you are able to uh as much as you are having trouble in this slippery substance uh so is carl with a k so after getting a good bite on you you're able to just the the pain and fear yank your leg away and kind of crab crawl back into the area where it's less slippery. So what do you do? Um, he's, is he like coming at me? He's trying, but he's mostly kind of like trying to crawl on the ground and not making a lot of progress because he's in, let's face it, a giant pool of blood. A lot of which is his. You are now able to see just this massive chunk has been taken out of his neck. Okay. Um, I think I want to get away. I want to get to a bathroom or the nurse's office or something. Yeah. Uh, I think because you are not immediately in danger. Go ahead and act, uh, act with skill with Swift. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just because there's a chance of things going horribly, horribly wrong. I got an eight. Oh, okay. Well, that's a partial success. Uh, you achieve your objective, but there's a complication. All right. Uh, so you do. You run to the nurse's room. Um, and you can hear the behind you of Carl with a K. Um, and you run around the corner. Um, you're very, very smart. So you're like, I don't know. Uh, maybe like you take your shoes off so like your socked feet don't make as much noise and you very quickly and stealthily kind of make your way to the nurse's station and slowly quietly close the door um and then we see one shot kind of of, of you uh, or kind of from behind you of you like with your ear pressed against the the kind of corrugated glass of the nurse's office door like listening to see if if he's chasing you and then the camera reverses to behind you. Uh, and on one of the little cots here, where like the kids who get a stomach bug or whatever, there is a shape. Is it Saturday? Go home. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but, but, but Tony doesn't know this yet. So, okay. so we leave Tony uh, completely safe in the nurse's office uh maggie having just uh decimated but but moved to a safe distance from the freshman uh back in the classroom what are milo and ali doing i'm guessing milo and ali are just kind of shocked over over uh, the eye surgery i just had to perform success quite successfully yeah. and that's like well I, I guess we gotta get back to our essays right <laughs> i turned i turned to ali should, uh, you should keep doing it, right? Well, well, they haven't returned yet, so shouldn't we go check on them? You 
you know? Oh yeah, it's been like 15 minutes or something like that. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing I don't have a great sense of time. It's been a while. Uh, I, we could go. We could go find uh, uh, Maggie and uh, and 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 uh, the other one. Hey, Allie. Yeah. As you've been doodling. You know, I think the world kind of sees you as someone who's a little checked out, but you actually do pay attention to what's going on. I think now might be a good opportunity for, like, an intuit the pattern. You have seen a couple of attacks, so you might be able to gather some information about what's going on, or at least intuit it. Intuit it. The, the voices in your head might be giving you a little bit of info. Um, so that is a role plus spooky. Okay. Spooky roll. Come on, 12. Spooky rolls. That's a 10. Ooh, oh. Nice. On a full success, you may ask two of what does the killer want? Who is the killer's next target? And what is the best way to temporarily keep the killer at bay? Uh, what is the best way to keep the killer at bay temporarily? All right. And your second question? Uh, Ali's probably thinking of Maggie, so who is the killer's next target? All right. So... The best way to keep the killer at bay is to kill its members. So you have connected the dots that whatever has happened to Judge was something that was a result of his fingers being bitten off. And that the I'll even give you what the what the killer wants for free. The killer wants to spread. So you to temporarily keep the killer at bay, you need to kill those that are infected by the killer. Uh, and the next target, you just have an intuitive sense that it's Tony. And because the weirdo is a little, like, spooky, I'll say that that shows up, like, you've just been kind of drawing on your essay. And as you're having these thoughts, kind of looking out, looking at, at Judge and seeing him still snapping, trying to bite at you, even though you're feet away, uh, you're connecting all these dots. And as you're, you look down at your drawing and you see a, a very nice kind of pen and ink drawing of that shot of Tony over Tony's shoulder with the form on the cot behind them. That's how you know Tony is in danger. What do you do? I just remembered that, you know, it's the, the seventh, which means it's, you know, that cycle time of females and I gotta go pee. <laughs> uh, come on, uh, Milo, come because I need assistance, because that's how things work. Go. Uh, that seems a little weird to me, but uh, I, I guess it, it would be ungentlemanly of me to say no. <laughs> I'll watch out outside. Well, okay, Ellie. <laughs> right. So, for clarification, because we're running the we're running both the horde mode of killer and the infected modification. Although no one has technically died, there have actually been multiple deaths. So any of your truth features or your spotlight moves that are that are triggered off of the first death, you can oh. call a scene at this point if you would like. Uh, mine involves players dying, so yeah, I'm good for now. Oh, is it, is it specifically a player death, or is it a major or supporting character? Um, 
I think uh, it's either my ward, which uh, in this case is Allie. Yeah. Or what is it? Uh, oh, or I die. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, no. Uh, so watchdog triggers. So it's apparent that there is mortal danger. So uh, you can, uh, you can call us. Uh, you can call a scene with your ward. Um, oh right. Oh, well, you can escape danger in their place. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, you haven't reached one survivor point. Your ward hasn't died, and you haven't died. So yes, for you, your watchdog is available to you. So at any point I, that Ali needs to escape danger, you can do it in their stead. Okay. Uh, oh. Final girl, uh, supporting I'm cast death. Do, supporting yeah. cast death has has happened, and you have reached zero survivor points. So you are going to be looking for an opportunity to reveal some sort of previous experience to one or more survivors. Okay. You are currently at zero survivor points. You haven't, you haven't gained any. Uh, Wait, but it says if this move is triggered, you must take all the survivor points for yourself. Oh, yeah. So we can be a little bit nice because we've got an hour. Uh, <laughs> but technically, yes, because the because this move has triggered by you hitting zero, you don't have the opportunity to let everyone know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, but didn't someone die before I hit zero? Yes. So we we can we can have it be uh, we can be a little bit loosey goosey, but for those who yeah, are interested, because in the, then I can give people survivor points. Yeah. So uh, okay. so for those who are who are interested in the system, uh, each truth comes with uh, a set of things that trigger on certain uh, uh, spotlight moves that trigger on certain conditions. Uh, the first one in the final girl truth is that you gather together one or more other survivors and reveal that you've been through something similar. It doesn't have to involve the same type of killer, but that you've you've survived some sort of dangerous situation before. If you do that, you may distribute, you kind of you can kind of pool survivor points uh, uh, plus the total number of deaths that have occurred up to that point and distribute them around. If you wait until you hit zero, uh, you have to trigger the scene, but then you take all the survivor points for yourself. Okay. So everyone just dies? No, uh, it's it's that like all the survivor points plus the number. Uh, oh, the got you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got so you. you would basically just gain. Instead of distributing them, I just take them. Yeah, you would gain two survivor points. So does basically. it really matter either way? Yeah, just just gain two survivor anyway. points. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I, I just read uh, I just read my uh, watchdog ability, and I actually instead of. Uh, I, I have to actually tell Allie that I I, I, pro I will promise to protect her and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, so let's let's have a scene with Milo and Allie as you are looking, uh, trying to go and rescue Tony. Okay. And then Is and there... then you'll pro I'm going to say you're going to run into Maggie, who will do her spotlight scene too. So spotlight scene one, which is Milo's uh, guardian spotlight scene. So what happens as you're making your way down the hallway? Uh, you know, Ellie, you really helped me with uh, with my essay. I, I feel like I'm really making progress, and I've, I've never felt so smart in my life. I mean, like, ever. Like, I I mean, I feel smart when I'm doing things like uh, shot put and triple jump and, and double jump, which is, which is something I invented. But, uh, <laughs> but like, this is the first time I've been book smart, and I, I, you know, I feel compelled to say that, you know, if you ever need help, I'll be there for you. Ellie. That is your name, right? It's it's Ali with an A. Oh, I've been calling you Ellie this whole time. Oh man, I'm I'm sorry. You know, I, I'm just not very good. Well, I, I'm actually great with names normally, but uh, th this time I'm I, I just blew it. I'm sorry. It's it's okay. Oh, thank you. I really just appreciate it. Uh, and then I just kind of sort of turn away, and then I, I feel confident, and it's like, oh, I'm going to be a good protector now. He just, like, shoulders wide. All right. 
I'm going to protect this young lady. Cool. (laughs) That's good. That's good. Thumbs up. So, and Tony, if you're able to survive and get back with your group, your driven to succeed spotlight move is also triggered. So you're going to need to share your ambition with at least one other main character. And that will enable you to take a survivor point if you do. So, so that is good. So resolve your... So now your uh, other move is available. Uh, As you approach, uh, Maggie, who looks rough, comes kind of like hobble running. Well, I guess now you don't have either shoe on. Uh, Just comes, just covered in gore, comes uh, kind of stumbling up the hallway. You stop for a minute at that um, giant pool of blood. Uh, You can see that someone has crawled out of the blood and you can see a few footsteps or boot prints uh, moving off down the hallway in a different direction. But uh, Carl with the K is no longer there and you don't see Tony. But you do see Milo and Allie up the hall. You guys, have you seen Tony? Tony was here. We fell in the blood. She ruined my outfit. Do you remember? Do you, did you remember seeing her at all? Does she wearing boots? I didn't even look at her shoes. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't want to be disappointed. Uh, which which one's Tony? Um, you know, like the like kind of nerdy, eh, you know, like I know things. That one. Oh, Tony. Yeah. You're the one with the sticky notes. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Oh, the sticky notes. Oh, yeah. God, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened to you you're covered in blood listen it's just like that time that there was a sale at the big place in the mall do you remember and i went there and there was only one sweater left the sweater of the season and it was a bloodbath in there and there the other two sweaters were ruined because people had come in and thrown pig's blood on them and the sweater that i wanted which was made of very rare and probably like almost extinct animal i wanted it and i only could get it by stepping on those around me and i got that sweater i did and this is a lot like that i think i was one of the people you stepped on what's your name Allie. Uh, it's Allie. El- Allie. Okay. Allie. It's funny because I always thought your name was L. Look, it, it. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, another IP that we don't want to infringe. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Allie. Okay, I have a question. Yes. In character or not character, out of character, yes. whatever the OCC is. Uh, so would it count? I guess it wouldn't count for the love sacrifice because she took a survivor point. It would not. Whereas I gave it to her. Yeah, that that's so, it. It, okay. it is a thing that you can do. Is your move the fact that she stole one from you does not count. Uh, so your fool for love, um, will only become available the first time Maggie, uh, targets you with an influence move or otherwise seeks to connect with you. You know what? I think recalling that, you know, having that conversation about stepping on Allie in the free for all Mm -hmm. bloodbath, uh, at, at the sweater barn. Allie wasn't even going for the sweater. That was the funniest part. Sorry. (laughs) So I think that that. Uh, that counts. The fact that the fact that Maggie has remembered you will play oh, faster. Yeah. So you may, if you would like, Ali, call uh, for the fool for love scene. Okay. Uh, so I guess that would be with uh, Milo. It could have been yeah. on the way to the. Sure. It can be. Before it can be a. Fla- it can be like a flashback. Maggie walking yeah. forward. Milo opened up to you about protecting you, uh, got your name right, and as you see, uh, Maggie coming towards you, you can certainly share. What with Milo? 
so nice. Allie's like, look, there's Maggie. She, like, even though it looks like she's covered in, what's that? Cranberry sauce? Who brings cranberry sauce to school on a Saturday? It's Is so it cherry good. cola? <laughs> I don't know. But, like, even she makes that work. And, you know, uh, just a little secret of mine. Um, I kind of had this little crush on her since like you know the third grade when she gave me her purple crayon and like our hands touched and it was like oh my gosh and then the other day she stepped on me at the sale when i was trying to get these cute little mouse earphones it was like oh my gosh she stepped on me i didn't wash that shirt for like a whole week until my mom was like, okay, you better put that in the wash because it's starting to stink. And I'm like, what? Well done. Mm -hmm. That's so wholesome. Oh. <laughs> that is the so most adorable nice. thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who would like, I think I need Allie to roll with skill plus swift. Because we need to know how quickly you're able to wrangle this ragtag bunch toward the nurse's station. So that when the camera cuts back, we'll know exactly what's going on with Tony. What is the effect of the spotlight moment? Uh, it simply uh, advances the character storyline. And, oh, okay. and then if there's any additional effect, like taking a, like opening up the next potential spotlight move or... Uh, regaining a sanity point or gaining sanity points for other people or regaining survivor points, etc. Oh, um, okay. Then that just executes on the point of that move. Some of them are repeatable. If they are repeatable, it's noted as repeatable. So you're protecting your award is repeatable. Yes. It says anytime this happens, it triggers. Uh, so Maggie, because you completed your scene, there have been two supporting character deaths, sort of. Uh, you gain two survivor points. Cool. Now I have two survivor points. Yeah. Cool. So what'd you get on that uh, act with skill there, Allie? A nine. Oh, okay. So that is a partial success. So it works the way that you want it to, only there is a complication. Yes. So... You are able to express to the group, it's like, oh, we gotta get to the nurse's station real quick. I have a feeling that Tony's in danger. Uh, and you come barreling around the corner very quickly, only to find that there is someone standing outside the nurse's station. It is Carl with a K. Tony. As of all this has been happening, you've just been listening you start to hear someone coming and you think about like calling out. Do you call out? Um, can I hear Carl outside the door? Well, or, like see is, his shape behind the glass. It's, it's your choice about whether you call out before that, like you hear someone coming. So do you call out or not? No. Okay. So you, because you are very smart and because the footsteps sound heavy and somewhat uneven, you wonder, uh, and then are somewhat <gasps> when a, a obvious adult male shape, just the shadow of it lurches into view. And then you see a bloody hand on the window and you hear, <sighs> and then you hear <sighs> behind you. You spin and turn, and this figure that had kind of been bundled up in one of the cots, someone who hadn't been feeling well, is kind of lolling its head toward you. I think I need you to deny fear because you're in a rough spot. Okay. Um, sorry, which one was that? Uh, it is deny fear. It is roll plus serious. Okay. Unless Ten. your trope 
changes that because you might be able to do that with smart. Uh, you are, or is that might be skeptic? Let's see. Uh, cool, cool, cool. No, you're good. Okay, 10. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, yes, you are totally fine. Uh, and now I'm remembering what your moves are. Your moves are actually pretty good. Uh, so you don't lose anything. You are, you recognize that you're in danger, though, as this, uh, I'll say another freshman, kind of sits up, uh, pulls itself up out of the cot, and then kind of reaches towards you and then overbalances and just splats down the floor and is slowly pulling itself up towards you. What do you do? Uh -huh. What's the layout of the of this office? Is it just kind of like a room? Yeah, or so like... so there's uh, the door that you are have your back to, uh, which is in the kind of, from your perspective, rear left corner of the room. It's more or less like a, uh, well, I'll say like a 12 by 12 box. On the opposite corner is uh, like a supply closet. And then there are some cots that line the walls. There's a little desk over on your right. Uh, so this person who's coming towards you is kind of on the uh, on the back wall, moving their way towards you. Okay. I think I want to get on top of the desk. Okay. Uh, roll plus swift. Well, act with skill with swift. Okay. Seven. All right. Uh, yeah, so you are able to get up, but there is a complication. Uh, I'm going to say the complication is that as you lurch toward the desk to climb up it, um, your belt loop is caught on the little handle of the door. And as you pull forward, it kind of snaps, but it does just enough to unlatch the door as Carl with a K is pressing on it. So that door starts to come open. So on the outside, you guys round the corner just to see Carl with a K on the nurse's station door. And then the door click opens and it kind of swings open when his little meaty paw hits it. He stands there for a second and then starts moving in. What are you guys doing? Tony, you are now on the desk. Are we on the way to the nurse's station? Yeah, Where I mean, you're, are we you're, right you're like 20 feet away from this. Okay. Um, huh. oh, that, uh, sorry, do we know that uh, Tony is in, in the, uh, the, the nurse's Allie does. station? Allie has, sh Allie has shared the information that Tony is in the okay. nurse's station. All right, so th this is my game then. I'm yeah. going to protect another. I'm going to go into a full-blown sprint. Yep. And then stop, ching, turn around, jump up in the air, and big elbow drop on the back of the head of the of uh, of Carl. Cool. Roll to protect another, and we'll see if you uh, are able to avoid danger yourself. Plus three with an edge. Uh, that's still not very good. Seven plus three. That's ten. That's ten. That's, that's good. Cool. Major Bane. Oh no. I'm gonna Bane knock I'm gonna knock that down to a partial success. Oh, okay. Uh which if my memory serves means that you do protect the target, which in this case oh. is gonna be Tony, uh, by distracting one of the attackers. However, I do believe that means it exposes you to danger. Let me double check that. Uh, partial success. Uh, all right. Uh, so it's a hit, but not a full success. Therefore, you must spend a survivor point to avoid disaster. I'm down to two. Awesome. So uh, he doesn't immediately turn around and take a chunk out of you. Right. Uh, however, you are now standing in the doorway uh, and you have kind of, you will say you've knocked him down to like one knee. So he is now blocking the doorway and he's going to try to get up in a second. Uh, what are Allie, Tony, and Maggie doing? Tony, the smaller individual 
has uh, redirected their shambling motion towards the desk. Um, I get Milo's attention and say, hey, 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 catch this. And then I throw him the knife that we found earlier. Cool. Uh, Milo, <laughs> act with skill with Swift. Swift is plus one, if I'm not mistaken. It is, oh, it's plus two. Oh, my. Yeah, you're uh, Swift and strong. Yeah, I'm both those things. Oh, uh, that's, uh, what is that? Plus two, eight. So not incredibly good, but still good. Cool. Partial success. You catch it, but you cut yourself. Oh. Not bad enough to impair you. It still hurts. It still hurts. <laughs> uh, but the good news is you can't really tell because your hand was already kind of bloody. Oh, no. Oh, no. So cool fine you're probably fine i'm probably fine no problem uh all right good well so yes uh milo is now armed uh all right what are uh okay maggie and Can Ellie doing yes yes, yes. Set up. so uh tony's on the desk there's a little guy going towards tony then there is milo and then there's Carl with a K on his knee. Yeah, so in the doorway to the nurse's station, which is basically all you can see, or maybe you can see a little bit into it to see uh, Tony on the desk and then see tossing the knife and then Michael, ow, and then grab it again. Right. Uh, the doorway, however, is currently blocked by Milo and Carl with a K. Okay, so I am going to take my necklace off, which I've put my brass knuckles on, okay. and I'm gonna put those on. And I'm just going to run up to Carl like I've had it, you know? And I'm just going to punch him in yeah. his stupid face. And I'm going to take out the fact that I'm not peaking in high school. And who cares? You're creepy. Stop talking to me. And I'm just like, poof. And I'm just like punching him. Cool. His head. Uh, right in the head. I'm going to say act with skill with strong. Okay. Uh, That would be... Seven. All right. So you do punch him in the head. I need you now to escape danger. Oh, gosh. When I do that, I have to take a survivor point. You have to spend a survivor point All to right. attempt the roll. Can, okay. Uh, can Ellie? I give... Can I give... Uh, uh, you want to uh, do love Maggie, sacrifice? Uh, yeah. yeah. So you're trying... Like, so to, like... Try to push her out of the way. Yes. So you go to punch him, and it does, and you you can you can see just like a dent appear in his face as you like crack his cheekbone, and he like his head rocks back, smacks up against the door, and then just like like a snake lunges to bite you. Uh, but Allie is there, and Allie interposes themselves between you and Carl with a K. So that means that Allie gets to escape danger in your stead. Oh. Can I escape danger instead of Allie? Yes. Yeah. It's a chain. Chain move. All right. I'm gonna I'm rolling strong, I'm I'm guessing. With an edge. Uh escape is with serious. Oh sorry. Uh I think I believe Oh, I because used... you because you're the jock, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh do I warding Escape danger. Oh no, it's just uh, escape danger in their stead. Yeah, that's correct. That's uh, yeah. which one is that? What's it's escape mysterious. Serious. It's serious. My serious is not great. Minus one, but I'll still do it. Cool. No edge. Ooh, ten. Cool. So you escape danger in their stead. Uh, uh, you spend a survivor point. So Allie spends a survivor point instead of Maggie, and then you spend a survivor point instead of Allie. So but you're, don't I gain a survivor point for help? You're for down help a survivor more? point, but then you gain it because you successfully defended your ward. So well but done. It's a combo. combo. Well Ooh. done. It's a, it's a good combo. Uh, and, and now you are, in fact, the only uh, target. Uh, Hooray. But, you, but you, did not, you did not expose yourself to danger because it was a full success. So uh, Allie dives in, knocks Maggie back, uh, probably ripping the sleeve of your... Of your I dress. am so mad. <laughs> and then um, Carbo the K goes to lunge at uh, bite Allie's leg, and then Milo just like grabs her, lifts her up, and like leaps back. 
out of Carl with a K's uh, range, still holding the knife. Tony, the small figure is reaching towards you. Um, are they on? Hmm. Is there a way I can like jump off the desk from a different side? Yeah. Are they coming around on the side? Yeah. It's they're small enough and you're large enough that I mean they can kind of get their hands on you, but they don't they don't have the reach to actually get the bite in. But you can certainly like being smart, it makes sense, like move over to one side of the desk to kind of attract them and then uh move over and jump off the other side. They do seem okay. to be slower than you. I mean you're not super athletic, but they are um impaired. So where are you trying to go for? Um, is Carl down for the count? No. Where do I stand in terms of the little guy and Carl? To get out of the room, you're going to have to get past Carl. Uh, okay. The I other go... option is the is the supply cabinet or supply closet. Yeah. And you think that you could like the desk is kind of over here. You think you could attract the, the freshman over to this corner and then dart over toward, if you're fast, dart over towards the supply cabinet closet. Am I fast? Not really. Um, let's see. But because you are the dweebazoid, I do believe you have some options. Uh, so you do deny fear with smart. Uh, you haven't declared anyone your crush, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, what we could do is we could, instead of saying this is act skill with smart, we could uh, act, uh, act with skill with swift. We could call this a uh, brains over brawn. So escaping danger, you can spend a sanity point to escape danger with smart instead of with serious. And that would help you, but you're pretty serious too. So. It's yeah, serious is better. Um, yeah, okay. I want to get out the door. Okay, that's wanna, for sure like... going to be an escape danger. So, okay. so do okay, so, <laughs> sp so spend a sanity point because you're going to have to get past Carl. Okay. okay. So, uh, spend a sanity point uh, to escape from danger. Sorry. Uh, which means you still have to spend a survivor point. Okay. But you can use smart instead of serious. So that gives you a benefit. I think serious is better. Is two it? instead of one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Your smart should be your smart should be higher than your smart starts at two. Did you put it down one? No. Yeah, you should have minus two, minus one, zero, plus two, plus two, one. And then you have the option of adding one to one and subtracting one to the other. Okay, so smart should be two. Smart should be at least two. My recommendation is that your your stat should be minus two, minus one, zero, plus three, plus two, minus two. The smartest thing to do is just not, because your social is not going to be good anyway. Might as well knock it down even further. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mary get attacked. So that means um, you'll be rolling with a you'd be rolling with a plus three instead of a plus two. Okay. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. So it's been a sanity point and a survivor point. Escape danger. Okay. I got eleven. Ooh, Ooh. yes. Uh you absolutely do. So uh you it's less that you're smart. Uh it's less that you're swift, but you do. You kind of you lead the freshman over to the far side um, and then hop off and then just kind of time it just right as uh, Carl with a K lunges out towards Milo, who's the closest. You just kind of scooch behind and get a good f five feet between you uh, and Carl with a K. So well done. You escape unscathed. Sort of. Except for that bite on your leg, which is starting to yeah. hurt. And that cut on Milo's hand, which stings a bit. So what happens? Well, threat assessment. We have a, a person that's uh, trying to attack other people. So uh, 
obvious thing to do is uh, go and uh, give him a good stab to the head. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, that, that does mean you're willingly going into danger. But first, let's see how good you are at, at stabbing the head. Uh, at what? At, at stabbing the head. We're going to call this an act with skill uh, okay. with strong. Strong? I'm good and, at that. And I'm going to say you need to take a snag on this for reasons. Oh, okay. For reasons. Well, because you're... Uh, it's you're, very bad. Your hand hurts. Uh, uh, I, I managed to get a total of six. Three cool. On the dice. Uh, so you you drive the uh, the knife into his neck. And you can see, because he's got a big chunk missing, the blade just pokes out the other side. And his uh becomes burble as like this black fluid bubbles out of his mouth. Uh, but it doesn't seem to um, impair him. And in fact, it hurts your hand because of that cut. And then he kind of mm -hmm. yanks his head out. And now the knife is just freestanding, sticking through his neck. Uh, but you are exposed to danger as he's going to try to bite you. No. So go ahead and spend that survivor point to escape danger. All right. Will do. Oh, you know what? Let's do a deny fear for everyone first. Deny fear. That's serious, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Which is a deny fear one. for everyone? Deny fear for everyone, because you just watched Milo stab ah, Carla the K through the neck. Bad. Three. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I got eight. I got six. Cool. I also got eight. But I'm upset because I rolled two sixes and a two. Oh. So yeah. those of you uh, with a partial success uh, can act normally, but take uh, an additional snag to your next action. Uh, you, uh, if you miss, you lose another sanity point there, Milo. Two. I don't have any All left right. again. Uh, I have one sanity point left. So, <laughs> Maggie, did you? <laughs> Have you, have you lost it again? Well, I mean, I could actually lose it and go on about something ridiculous and get a sanity point back. So it's like the more I whine, the more sanity I get back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're kind of the like worst. Terrible. It's great. It's You're kind terrible. of the worst because, yeah. because oh, no, yeah. combination of Miss Popularity and, and uh, Final Girl is like right. just about the worst. <laughs> uh, so, but Milo has one sanity point left. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Now I need you to uh, escape danger with snag. And that is with a snag, you say. Okay, yeah, this is bad. Because of the failure on the deny fear. I might have to use a boon. Uh, pretty good on the dice. What do we got? We got seven. It would be six, unfortunately, which I believe is a failure, is it? Yeah. You want to do something I, about that? I'm going to I'm gonna major boon. Cool. Which means I can roll... Up to I'm all. just gonna roll. I'm gonna roll the last dice, which was a two. Okay. I only need to get get three or higher. Yeah, that's a seven. Cool. So that is Good. a Enough. partial success. Uh, yes, as opposed to a massive yep. failure. You take a snag on deny fear going forward, which means all right. a snag on all deny fear forever. <laughs> Oh. Uh, would you like to uh, spend an additional survivor point? Uh, what is What would that do? Uh, well, you had to spend a survivor point to escape danger, so you have to spend another survivor point. Okay. Uh, or you can spend two sanity points. I have. I don't have the resources to do either. I mean, you you could just go crazy. Uh, you could also hit zero sanity survivor points. It just means you can't escape danger again. Uh, mm. Or you can choose a trait to add snag for all future moves to represent strain or injury, which in an infection game is meaningful. Ah, so, hmm. So your choice. Uh, Never be able what? to escape danger again, go completely crazy, or something interesting happens due to an injury, which means adding snag to one of your physical traits. I guess it could be another mm -hmm. one. Like you could be horribly scarred in the face and that reduces your social. It's your choice. Oh, social. Ah. It's probably bad. I'm going to say it needs to be one of your physical ones because you're in a okay. physical tussle. 
Uh, sneaky would be physical. Yeah. All right. We'll sort put, of. We'll put, a, we'll put a snag on uh, on sneaky. Cool. Uh, so yeah, you get uh grazed. Ow. Uh, and you're gonna have a little bit of a limp, which isn't gonna slow you down, but it's gonna make it hard for you to be sneaky. Uh, so yeah, he gets a good, just like it, it breaks the skin, but he doesn't get to like take a chunk out of you. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, uh, an injury. So that'll be interesting. It's not uh, looking good for old Milo. Yeah. Or Tony for that matter. Uh, cool. So at the moment you have lost your knife in his neck. He got a little bit of a swipe at you, but you've been able to create some distance. Uh, what is everyone doing? Uh, Maggie has lost her mind. So what I, happens? I'm about to lose it on the, on whoever's in like near me. So where so, is, well, where are the bad guys right now? Uh, so right now, uh, Carl with a K is, uh, still kind of in the doorway and you can see this freshman kind of behind him uh -huh. reaching out, but the freshman isn't able to get past because Carl with a K is significantly larger. Okay. Got you. How many survivor points does Maggie currently have? Two. Okay. But basically. Every time I have to escape danger, um, the character with the lowest number of survivor points has to spend theirs instead. Yeah, because you've hit zero. Yeah. So. But I have two right now, so everyone's fine right now. No, you've hit zero. No, no, no. I got two back, remember? I know, but, of you, my one... but you hit zero. Oh, I'm looking so... at survivor points. <laughs> I have zero sanity. Yeah. I have two survivor points. Yes. Yeah. So, the, so does that so does that mean love's embrace can trigger? Yeah. Since Maggie went down to zero. Yeah. Okay. I'm sitting I don't know what that is, but I'm sitting at zero. Yeah. So can can a Ali call a spotlight scene in which uh we confess our feelings to Maggie? Sure. So I, I'm going to say you guys uh, start moving away uh, with Milo kind of hobbling a little bit, dragging this injured leg. Um, where where are folks going? Well, where's Tony? Tony has made it out. Oh, okay. Tony is out. So, so the okay. four of you are all together. So where where are folks going? I mean, I feel like we should try to get to the football field okay so you're gonna, you're gonna try, <laughs> try to head out okay cool yeah i feel like we should try to get out of here yeah i mean yeah. from our point of view like all of the danger is right here like we need to go home like i'm we gonna need say to get out. Ma maggie's super panicked so i'm just gonna say so for a moment uh although you do have that ability to to come back so for a moment maggie's just like we have to get out of here and then it starts going off ali obviously for reasons chases after uh, I'm going to say because of other things, Tony and Milo are a little bit slower. So this means that uh, Maggie and Allie are able to burst outside the doors first, which gives us a chance for the spotlight scene of Love's Embrace. So Allie, what happens when you burst outside? Allie's like... First of all, I'm sorry for ripping your shirt. It looked amazing on you, and now I've ruined it, and I'm terribly, horribly sorry. But, uh, you know, everything that's happened in there is just wild, and I, I don't know if anything's going to happen to us or whatnot, and, you know... So I'm just going to go and say it. I've had a crush on you for, like, so long, and, like... I don't know, I needed to get that out. Um, I mean, okay, that's nice. You and like half the school, but uh, yeah, wow, that's really wholesome. Um, I get it. Also, um, we have to get out of here, so maybe we could like talk about this never again. 
or you know but i think we should focus on getting out of here first Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> this made me feel so bad. Yeah, uh, cool. Yeah. So, so with this, uh, what is it? At the end of the scene, the survivor points held are pooled by me and Maggie, and we yes. did the shoot. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so Maggie currently has two, and, and you have how many? As two all right and you can do both of them uh we distribute them amongst each other so as long as we end up with at least one survivor point each yeah it doesn't matter how it is and because uh maggie did not reciprocate your feelings you can you could you could conceivably um have maggie with one if you want yeah. I mean, you can you can take them. It's everyone else that's gonna suffer. So it's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah. And and as I was saying, because Maggie has hit zero, it doesn't matter. Like you can wind up with fifty survivor points every time you have to escape danger. It comes off the person with the lowest. Yeah. So, go ahead. So, Allie, how are you okay, distributing those four points, or however many it is? Yeah, so I guess uh, Allie will take three and uh, Maggie will take one. Okay. Uh, and then it also says uh, I take a, one additional su survivor points and I have four. Yeah. Uh, so the nature of the scene is entirely up to the players, but in general it should resolve with either the two characters coming together, either mutual respect and whatnot, or which is the love's embrace version or with your character realizing their feelings were misplaced, which, which I believe love. is what here, which yeah. is Yeah, I'm awful. Love. Why yeah. are you crushing yeah. on me? Straight up tainted love. <laughs> I'm the worst, man. Uh, teenagers make bad decisions. They really do, don't they? Yeah, so a, a car drives by with tainted love playing in the <laughs> background. <laughs> yeah. So good. So you, so uh, Ali has realized that uh, their obsession for Maggie was maybe misplaced, and that actually enables them to uh, survive a little bit better, maybe, uh, which you're going to need uh, because you're not alone. So as Tony and Milo catch up, just in time for the doors to close behind you with a clunk, Cause these are those doors that, you know, with the, the bar. Yeah. 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 So you can always get out, but getting in can be a challenge. The, uh, track team is out here. Uh, they seem to be a little worse for wear. Like one of them is crawling because his leg has been gnawed off, but several of them, uh, Although none of these folks are super fast, several of them hear the clank of the door as Tony and Milo come out and their heads turn around and they start stumbling quickly towards all of you. What happens? They're really kind of slow. I thought our track team was good. <laughs> hey, Milo and Tony. Would you guys, hmm, I think I need you both to act with skill with strong. All right. Here it comes. Uh, 11. Oh, well done. I got five because i was snagged so i roll three and take the two lowest yeah yeah five all right that actually makes sense uh tony you're not feeling very good like you you feel a little bit hot and a little bit like obviously you're super freaked out because of all this stuff happening but like physically you don't feel great and there's just this like 
gnawing pain in your stomach. Like is it the IBS? It's usually the IBS. <laughs> it's probably the IBS. Uh, you don't have your, and unfortunately, your emodium is back in your book bag uh, in the library. Uh, and you start to, oh God, your stomach. And there's something, like as you look at your friends, there's some feeling welling up in you. Like you, you look at your the f exposed flesh of your friends and you can start to feel your mouth watering. Ew. I know it's kind of gross, but also at the same time, she's like, I don't know. I wonder if Milo tastes like chicken. I probably mistake this for someone else being obsessed with me. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, uh, Tony just oh starts to Oh my God, they're coming out of the woodwork you. today. Like, mm. <laughs> cool. So, uh, Maggie, uh, you, you're going to need to uh, rant and rave to get a sanity back. Yeah. What am I going to rant and rave about? Hold on, let me think about it. Everything. I forgot my lip gloss in the library, so I don't even have any lip gloss. I got my shoes are gone. My socks are gone. Everything's ruined. Allie over here is sitting there telling me all kinds of things that are that are that make no sense. Like, do you have a crush on me? You're looking at me like you want to eat me up, which is really weird. And I just want to go home. I just want to go home. I want to take a shower and I want to do my hair. Also, I need to get my nails done later. I have to remember to do that. OK, so focusing on the mundane things regains you a single sanity. So you're back to being a main <laughs> character with your own actions. Cool. So as the uh, track team closes in on you. What do you do? First of all, everyone die fear. Let's see how many snags we have to stack on the stuff that needs to happen. I have a, do I have a snag on my deny fear? I forget. Yeah, you have a, a yes, stack on deny fear going forward, just means forever. I have an eight. Cool. And nine. Cool. Ah! Three. Ah! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Great. And so I look, also with Allie, uh, good deal. So, uh, yes. So Milo and Allie panic and lose a sanity point. Does that bring anyone to zero? Oh, yeah. All right. So Milo loses a sanity point and is now a supporting cast character under my control. Uh, and those, the other two, did we get a 10 on any of those? No, so the other two were partial successes. Yeah, eight and nine, I think. Okay, so uh, you may act normally, but take a snag on your next action. Your next action is going to be to uh, escape danger, except for Milo, who can't, because Milo is a supporting character. Yep. Okay, also, that's going to put me to zero survivor points. Is that fine? Oh, you don't get to spend survivor points anymore. You have to take it for the, from the person with the lowest. So who currently uh -oh. has the lowest total? Oh. I got one. You now have, have zero. Two. Cool. All right. So Milo goes insane and loses sanity points, which is fine because you wouldn't have been able to spend it anyway because you're temporarily a supporting cast character. Right. So uh, everyone else needs to roll to escape. Uh, so do that. That means spend a survivor point. Eight. Cool. That's only two dice, right? Uh, no, use three. Take the two lower because okay. you have a stack. Uh, no, wait, wait. You got a partial Seven. success. Uh, yeah, you get a snag on your next action, which is not fair, so. Oh, wait, I had a snag on this one, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. I messed up. Let me roll it. Hold on. Yeah, I got seven. Okay, it's still a partial. Oh, yeah, I got eight again, actually. <laughs> so. Okay. So, uh, I think Maggie needs to spend another survivor point, which means okay. taking it from Tony now. Okay. Tony, give me your life force. And then Tony, uh, you get the choice of spending your last survivor point, two sanity points, uh, or taking another injury. Um, I'll spend a sanity point. Uh, it's two sanity points. I have to spend two, but yeah. I only have two. I know. So you, um... you can lose your last survivor <laughs> point, you can go completely insane, or you can get bit again. <laughs> It's not good choices. 
I'll lose a survivor point. Okay, but it's fine. That enables you to escape this. It just means you can't escape anymore. Unless you can find a way to recover survivor points. Yeah, I don't think I'll need to escape again. <laughs> well, I mean, there are ways. You're good at investigating. There are ways that, that you can get survivor points back. Um, okay. But, so cool. And then Allie got what? A six. So Allie straight up failed. Uh, what would you like to do about that? Can I use a major boon? Yeah. You, or you could, in theory, spend two survivor points. One to kick it up one degree of success, and then one to address the need to spend another one um, for the partial success. What does a minor boon do? Uh, adds one. Okay. I'm just going to use a major boon and try to get higher than yeah. what I have. And remember, you don't have to reroll all. You can reroll the low ones. So that's a seven. Okay, so now it's a partial success. So uh, do you want to lose two sanity? Do you want to spend another survivor point? Or do you want to gain an injury? Uh, probably spend a survivor point. Cool. So you are... You are down to one, right? Two. You're down to, two. Okay, cool. Oh, that's right, because you stole some and then added one because of the move resolution. Cool. So you're down to two. So you're still kind of doing okay. Milo has none. Tony has none. Maggie doesn't care. The good news is next time you have to escape, you can only steal it from Allie. Uh, so that's good. Uh, cool. So, um, but Tony escapes. Allie escapes. Maggie escapes. Milo goes insane. And I think is just going to throw himself at the combined track team. Just the going whole, for broke. The whole team. So Can as Maggie and Tony and Allie run away, um, Milo just head down, just runs, tackles, starts, you know, arm locking and <laughs> punching and whatever. Uh, and then the camera cuts away just in time to see one of the track team members go <laughs> onto Milo. Milo. I mean, he was going to become a zombie anyway. I know, but he was such a nice character. So, can I? Can yes. I have a, just as an opening to my Please final? Uh, just I pick up one of the javelins from the javelin team and I huck him and then dive in. Just like. Yes. You catch three of them together. And they are now <laughs> pinned, pinned together, and then and just dive in. Yeah, you're shot. you're you're doing it. You're doing a, a darn good job of buying time for other folks to escape. So where are Maggie, Tony, and Allie going? Who Unfortunately, the all the other supporting the cast has died. Oh I no, really that's not true. Hey, uh, Shanks. Yes. Uh, Mr. Vernon. Oh yeah, you can oh. be Mr. Vernon. <laughs> all right, uh, so. Me... So you can you can adopt Mr. Vernon, uh, who is the who is the professional, which is the skeptic playbook. So you can okay. or skeptic trope. So you can use the, but you don't get a truth, and you don't get survivor points. And all my stats are zero, flat zero. Yeah. Okay, I did read that. Right. But you, but you can do you can you have control over Mr. Vernon at this moment. Because he is the okay. only living person left. He's also uh, what, super drunk. Yeah, you should just so, say the cabinet. So we keep drinking. Bag on everything. So so yeah, we we uh, we'll say that this fracas is happening like kind of outside that the the library. Um, we already established the library overlooks the track. Uh, so as Milo is dogpiled by uh, some javelin impaled track team members. We briefly cut into the uh, the storage room of the library as Mr. Vernon like empties the very last of the whiskey bottle and kind of drops it on the floor and it rolls and then he kind of hears ah. this noise. Eh, what's that? Yeah, 
You kids, uh, you kids screwing around out there? Open yeah, the door. That's what I thought. It's empty with the exception of Judge, who is still struggling <laughs> on the floor. You do see, however, out the window towards the track, what looks to be some rough housing. I can't have any of that. Got to get out there and break it up. All right, you you stay right there. You stick around, buddy bear. All right, and I and I head out to to well, I stumble out actually. Yeah. Cool. To, to, to go break up the fracas. Okay, cool. So we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, Tony, Ali, Maggie, where are you going? I just wanted to say I love that both of Shanks' characters are in a brawl with the with the track team. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Staying true um, to character. I think we should go. I probably have like a really big house that's like right down the street because like whatever. So we should probably just try to go to my house or something. Or do I have a car? Yeah, you have a. We should, maybe we should. You just have a little car. little Mercedes convertible, I think. Okay. Well, I don't have a lot of room, and I don't really want to get blood in it. But we can. Do either of you have a car? I, uh, uh, Allie and Tony were dropped off by their parents. Fine. Let's take my car. So the question is, do you have your keys on you or are they in your purse? Oh in my the God. Library? They're with my lip gloss. Oh, I don't have any keys. I'm going to lose my mind. I don't have any keys. <laughs> Well, you, they might be in your pocket. We don't know. You could. Maybe. You could uh, investigate, maybe. Like, like yeah. literally, like, look around and see. So role play what if, smart. Does my dad make me, like, keep a key, like, in the, you maybe. know, like, how you used to be able to open the gas tank and have, like, a little magnet yeah, key in there? Maybe. Investigate the situation. Maybe lock my keys in my car a lot or something. Yeah. Uh, investigation. Car. Let's see. Uh, six. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who's this at any point? <laughs> spend a minor ba a baboon. Get that one. Oh, yeah. yeah, I could get it up to seven. Okay, cool. So a minor boon. Spend that minor boon. Uh, so uh, you do find something useful, but you're going to miss an important detail or complication. So oh, cool. Uh, yes, in fact, you do, as you're freaking out, and starting to go off on how unfair life is into one of one of one of your melodramatic soliloquies. You're like, oh wait. Uh, and then you reach under uh the the rear bumper where a little magna key is and you pull it out. Uh I'm gonna say you you gotta you're gonna have Allie and Tony in the back seat, which is about as far away from you as possible. Yeah. Uh and it's also one one less seat also, to clean up. Do I have like I was gonna say, do I have a sheet or something I could make them sit on instead, but it's fine. Yeah. Why not? You can pop the trunk and pull out something and lay it. Oh my god, the... don't sit on the leather. Oh my god, here, put this down first. Cool. You got an old sweater that was damaged a while ago. <laughs> That's true. Right. I'm so upset about this, that. Some sort of some sort of rare Ecuadorian chinchilla sweater. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It was very expensive. The 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 only three ever made. Right. The the last extant uh, members of that species went into this yeah. poopy sweater. Yeah. You're like, uh, it's last season now. Who cares? Yeah, that's um, fine. So cool. Uh, yeah. So then you start up your car and you're going to head back to your house? Yeah, probably. Right? We need cool. to find a phone that works. Cool. Uh, I'm going to say... Tony. I am going to need you... I'm going to scroll way down. Actually, I need to open up a different doc. Um... I am going to need you to roll plus strong, but your strong is plus three. Okay. <laughs> Ten. Oh. Okay. Uh, hey, well, I mean, if we can, like, well, actually, no. Uh, so, Tony, who is more delicious to you, Maggie or Allie? Maggie is closest to you in the back seat, but 
uh, no, sorry, Allie, Allie is closest, closest to you, to you in the back yeah. seat, but Maggie is directly in front of you driving. So it is it is Tony's choice who you think is going to sate this endless pit of hunger in your stomach. Driver, driver, driver. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I feel like Maggie probably smells weird, like perfume and lip gloss and hairspray and all that. So probably Allie. Cool. <laughs> as Allie goes by. <laughs> so Sing by the Aquanet. So Allie, uh, as Tony is not doing well, I mean, like it's like sweat and it's like shivering and uh, clearly is has uh, feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, and you go to like, are you okay? And just out of instinct. Arr! So I'm going to need you to escape danger there. Allie. Max her face. Yeah, this is the complication that Maggie missed was the fact that Tony is turning very rapidly in your car. Yeah, because Judge turned real fast. Yeah. What was that result there, Allie? Six. You want to try to do something about it? Yeah, can I... Use a minor uh, boon if we have one. Yeah, uh, a minor yeah, seven. Boon. Five, I think. Yeah, cool. How many... Uh, oh, we have four left, I think. Yeah, cool. How many uh, survivor points do you have left? After using the one for the roll, one. Cool. Um, would you like to spend that last one, or would you like to spend two sanity, or would you like to get bit, but not outright killed? Uh, probably bit, but not outright killed. It's like <laughs> okay. bite, and it's like, hey. Okay. Oh. So, so, uh, take a permanent snag to one of your abilities. Uh, probably strong. Yeah. Get bit in the meat of the arm. Yeah. Cool. Tony, you're not dead yet, but, uh, you're, you, you kind of come to just pulling back. With, with a chunk of alley in your mouth. And at first you're like, oh, spit it out or swallow it. Spit it out or swallow it. Spit it out or swallow it. Like, is this normal? Is it my own It's a, it's a tough decision. <laughs> and I, I hope I spit it out. Yeah, yeah, and then you spit it out, and then you're like... <laughs> you know, three-second rule. Uh, Maggie, you see this in your rearview mirror. Oh, my gosh. What do you I do? with these two. I'm probably going to throw on the brakes and tell everyone to get out of my car. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> like, I, everyone just get out. I'm over it. Uh, well, I can't. Uh, as Maggie slams on the brakes, uh, Maggie, would you act with skill with uh, Swift? And I need everyone else to act with skill with Strong. Tony, you're still at plus three strength. Okay. Plus Ooh, three strong. I got a 12. Ooh. 11 on the dice. 11, cool. I got seven. Okay, 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 okay. Allie? It's a five. <laughs> uh, cool. Wait. No, it's six. It's still a fail, but yeah. Okay, so cool. So you slam on the brakes. Uh, you miss the fact that there was some sort of wet stain and maybe some chunks of something or someone in the middle of the road. And the car kind of goes into a skid. Tony just grabs on, uh, but Allie is ejected out, out of the, uh, uh, and you got a partial there, right, Maggie? Where you see No, I here? had 11. Oh yeah, that's right. You well, see... I had 12. I had 11 yeah, yeah. on the dice and then plus one. So, so, Ma so Maggie is fine. Tony is fine. Allie is, however, <laughs> ejected uh and lands in the verge so what happens 
I turn and I go, get out. <laughs> what do you do, Tony? You're still real hungry. You don't have to do anything yet, but it's your choice. Well, and I probably also make the mistake of like <laughs> sticking your arm like right yeah, in like front of Tony's face. You're behind me, right? Because I'm driving. You're behind me, and I'm like, get out, <laughs> like that. Uh... I don't know. I think. I mean, instinctually, like as my character, I would want to listen. But how much of me is still me? You're 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 gonna be alive for a like a few more seconds. Uh, so maybe we can make it a deny fear. That's that's a probably good proxy to just to understand if you're able to keep yourself together and listen, or if you give over to your newer instincts. Okay, so that's which serious is serious. Here. Uh, which nine? I, okay, so it's a partial. So you will uh, take a snag on your next action. So you can act normally. Okay, I think I'd get out. Okay, cool. So you, <laughs> as as Maggie's doing this, like right in front. <laughs> it's like. Oh, it smells like hot dog, and you're just like so hungry, and, you, ah. and then you're like, no, 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 keep it together, keep it together, Tony. Uh, so you climb out uh, over the like, like you don't even worry about the door. You you hop out over, and then what happens? Well, I'm. She bit. She took a chunk out of Alley, right? Yeah. You. Why are you biting people? Are you like, are you sick? Do you have that? Are you ill like those other people? I think maybe. Okay, I have to go. I'm sorry. Good luck, okay? <laughs> okay, bye. Wait, take me to a hospital or something. Just like, I'll get in the trunk, whatever. Okay. I open the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I put her in the trunk. I'm just going to go drop her off at the hospital real quick. Okay, cool. I'm out of here. Okay, cool. And I'm only We're... doing this because, like, I mean, we had that moment where I guess we, like, kind of bonded in that pile of, you know, strawberries. So, strawberry jam. All right. So, so Maggie's going to the hospital with Tony in the trunk. Tony is now fully dead, but now undead. That's good. What uh, so you don't have to worry about most things other than trying to bite people with your now three strength. Um, Allie is soon to expire on the side of the road. What's happening with uh, Mr. Vernon? Burner. Mr. Vernon is uh, Verner is very uh, confused as to where all the other children went. So, uh, you know, he, he knows he can't drive, but he he gets on a bike, which is also illegal, but not nearly as uh, bad. And he tries to bike around trying to find these kids on the school grounds. Like, where are these kids? Yeah, be, being, being drunk, instead of just like going outside, you decide to go out front and grab a bike, which, by the yeah. way, is a younger kid's bike. It's one of those <laughs> pink with the little little crinkly the streamers, little streamers and streamers, the white yeah. basket with the little molded daisies and the big white banana seat. Yep. It's about perfect. Three sizes too small for you, so you're pedaling along. Awesome. I'm basically, I'm I'm having my '80s principal moment. Yes. So give me uh, act with skill with Swift with please. a snag, right? Uh, Everything's zero, and I guess it's a snag because I'm wasted. Oh, I think it's fine. Oh, okay. So regular. I think it's more fun if you fail huh. on your own account. Uh, sorry. It's a, it's a, I got a nine. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yes, uh, it's not so much that you fall over. It's just that you're used to an adult bike that has mm. uh, handle brakes. <laughs> Instead of those ones that where you, where you pedal back backward. So you yeah. actually get up some really good speed. And so as something really gruesome is happening in this dog pile uh you actually get on the track and get up a real good head of speed 
and then realize that, oh, this maybe is not a good situation, and then go to start trying to grab the brakes, uh, and they don't work. So you go <laughs> plowing into the pile of zombies. <laughs> so we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, so Maggie, uh, can you act with skill with Swift for me? Yes. With Swift. Uh, that is an eight. Cool. Uh, you managed to miss most of the individuals who were kind of wandering around in the middle of the street. <laughs> most. There, there's like at least one or two that you kind of clip. But That's what bumpers are for. But they were they were not particularly fashionable, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So yes, uh, you make it to the hospital. You can hear, <laughs> you can hear something going on on the inside. You, like, as you pull up, uh, something like some piece of machinery crashes through a window and an upper floor, and then smacks down on the pavement right beside your car. You can see bloody handprints all over it. You, uh, you can see in the it's one of those like like semicircular entrance ways that's relatively broad big enough for ambulances you can see uh figures in hospital gowns hands up against the glass doors pounding on them trying to get out uh and you can hear someone bump 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 from the trunk okay does this car have the manual like trunk popper or do yeah, i yeah. have to sure, open sure. the trunk Okay, I'm just going to pop the trunk and be like, get out! That almost <laughs> hit my car! <laughs> cool. So, as you do, uh, I'm going to say, Tony, yeah, you you crawl out. Uh, <laughs> and then probably immediately attempt to go and <laughs> get to the nearest source. Uh, but the car is still running. So, as you stumble out and start to go, uh... We'll say you still have your hand on the bumper as Maggie peels out. You're dragged a little bit and then roll on the pavement and then gradually <laughs> get up. Cuts off here and I've got a hand on the back of my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so cool. Yes. So uh, as Maggie drives off into the sunset is apparently how uh, every session of survive ends uh, <laughs> yeah, you are passed by sunset. military vehicles uh and then you see in the rear view mirror as uh arm armed forces just pile out and start <laughs> at all the um afflicted uh this a similar thing happens a helicopter comes and lands in the middle of the of the sports field uh and there you know someone hops out and then there's a thunk and then the last thing that uh mr Werner sees is this little object come and kind of blink 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 as these uh track and field members are trying to rip you apart you look down just in time to go oh sh and then <laughs> As there's a big crater now in the middle of the of the track track and field area. I, I knew I should have taken a personal day. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, that's true. The the last words from Mr. Bernard are, "Eat my shorts." <laughs> as someone is literally eating your shorts as we speak. Uh, Allie probably wanders off somewhere. Who knows what happens? Uh, yeah, who knows. Uh, but it's smart enough to get off the road as the uh, armored vehicles come by. So oh, Ali survived? Well, I got bit. No. Oh. But we'll see. Uh, and uh, yeah, Maggie passes by all this uh, and probably makes a stop at uh, Forever 21 or whatever. <laughs> Just yep. throws a trash can Just through the window. Yeah. Get yourself new stuff, some new pretty pink uh, lip gloss. Uh, loads up on all the important things and then drives off into the sunset. So it takes off. Yes, as per usual, the final girl is the final girl. Everyone else dies a uh, probably super duper gruesome death. So, mm -hmm. hey, Sorry, everybody. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh, you were, in fact, the breakfast club. <laughs> well done. 
Hey, let's uh, go around and uh, introduce yourself and then also do the final montage for your character. So, uh, Mary, that is in your truth. Uh, and if you're, if you use the, the fancy little sheet, it'll give you the text for what happens, uh, in your final montage. So let's start with Shanks. Uh, final montage. Sorry. Uh, it is, uh, it, final, it, is, oh, final... it is tied to your truth. There it is. Uh, if you're, you and your ward survive, not the case. Narrow yeah. scene. Okay, da, 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 da. if you lived and your ward died, nope. If you died, narrate the, your final hope that everything you went through would guarantee the ward survival. I, uh, so, sorry, is so, Ali... So, as, as the credits roll, we get to kind of revisit the last moments of all the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, or So, in some cases, it's your final dying thought. In some cases, it's a uh, flash forward to something if you lived. So as Milo is being consumed by the track team, your last yes. thought is of Allie, your ward. So what is going through Milo's head? Uh, I hope Allie's okay. She made it made me feel okay about enjoying musical theater and especially Cats, because Cats is the best musical of all time. Do you sing a little bit of a tune? Ah, uh, yes. Memories <laughs> all alone in the moonlight. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fantastic ending. And you are Shanks Master General. I'm Shanks Master General. You can find me at Twitch TV slash Shanks Master General, or you can see my band, The Dreadnoughts, on Spotify and, and other places for music. D R E A D N O U G H T S. Thank you very much. Awesome. Sin. Okay. So at the current moment, Ali is still yes. quote unquote alive. Yes. So both love and me quote unquote survive. Yes. So how the re relationship evolves, uh, it doesn't that's that's plain and simple it doesn't it ended it died so the end credit scene with ali is i guess got the arm wrapped up in like some random cloth and like because like with all you know zombie apocalypse eventually finds guns or whatnot and just <laughs> like the firing range is like picture she has drawn that was maggie is just like pew, pew, Ooh. getting targets and they're like all kind of like older ones are like off but then as it gets closer it's like real like headshots yeah so, oh so maybe, maybe we see credit. yeah we see some like Vengeance. in some in, uh unforetold future some uh rag and shrouded character taking pot shots potentially uh, the real monster is man well, who... <laughs> and, and we don't know who it is but we can see that the target is maggie it's bl blown up blown up pictures from uh when she was prom queen last year <laughs> so well done awesome so mary sorry sorry you yeah. died <laughs> that's okay uh, you know you can find me Oh yeah, oh yeah, Sin, sorry, finish up. Uh, you can find me here on C Plus content playing fun games with super cool people. Maybe running some games with some super cool people or hanging out in the Discord with super awesome pe people at community dot C plus content dot I don't know what else. Dot TV. Uh, I also stream on Twitch. Yep. TV. TV. Cool. Uh, I also stream on Twitch. Uh, I think it's gonna be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, at around 1 p.m. Eastern, which is 12 noon Central. So check me out there. That's cool. People. Okay, Mary. Okay. Um, this says if you died, describe how you became famous in death. I mean, I think there would probably be articles about how there was an outbreak at the school and how some students were attacked there, maybe. But probably 
I would fade into obscurity, just like. <laughs> Well, so you're I in... like to think I'm like hanging out in the hospital, like some residual smarts kind of stuck around. So I like go for the good shit and all the, the you know, closets and whatnot. The <laughs> just like little yeah. stab of an EpiPen to keep going. Maybe like go up to the burn unit and get some of that deep fried stuff. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, living, so your, living your best finger life. looking good. <laughs> Best I, dead life, yeah. I, I love it. Well, your ambition, I'm going to say your ambition was always to make good and get out of town. Uh, so as the, uh, at some point later, as the military are are clearing out this facility because they're going to need it to treat all the wounded, uh, they're going through headshot, headshot. Uh, but uh, one of the officers notices that your behavior is atypical. Because you have you have like supplies around you, and you seem to be uh, less completely brainless than some of the others, and they decide that instead of putting you down, they're going to capture you. And so you, uh, we see the last the last scene of Tony is being strapped into one of these helicopters and being flown away to an undisclosed location for further study. So you got out of town. You achieved your ambition. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! All right. And do you you don't stream, do you? No. No, I've thought about it, but no. Usually I'm just, you know, in chats, in Discord, being silly. Awesome. Well, glad you joined us. Hope you come back. Yeah, thanks. All right, Meg. Uh, I, so Maggie is driving off, and um, I think at some point, I mean, she doesn't feel bad about the fact that she hasn't helped anyone or done anything. But she, at some point, she realizes that this might be, like, an actual serious, like, thing. And so she has all of her stuff from her Forever 21. And her plan is to, like, go find a really great, like, you know, shopping mall of sorts. Yeah. To go, like, hole up. You know, go to where she knows, where she's comfortable. You know, figure stuff out and start trying to figure out a way to like fend for herself or like, you know, and, uh, yeah. And she's just going to try to survive, but still be fashionable while surviving. And so that, you know, that's her, that's going to be a tough one, but she's, she knows that that's what Ooh. she's got to do now. The she's got to help fashion survive. <laughs> she could become episode. like a mortician or something and start like working on all the dead bodies that people. Are yeah. And like, like, look, this look is in. what you guys, just cause we're in a zombie apocalypse doesn't mean we have to look drab, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. it could be, uh, the, the next scenario could be in the, in the shopping mall. Would be I know, perfect. right. <laughs> yeah. so, some uh, some strange about... figure. Yeah, yeah. I'm making about uh, uh, you can catch me streaming. I'm actually going to be streaming here in a second, uh, but I stream mostly on Saturdays. I'm a teacher, so I usually only stream on Saturdays but during the summer. I stream more. So TV. you go there. It's got all my stuff, you know. Awesome. Hey, Juice. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming and dropping all those moons and banes and all that good stuff. Uh, thanks, uh, everyone, for playing, especially Mary, for your first time here. Uh, it's I guess it's always a, a good initiation to have your character turned into a zombie and then studied <laughs> probably quite terrifically uh, horrifically uh, for maybe years. So yeah, this has been uh, another uh, episode of Survive, our kind of horror movie genre playing with tropes uh, custom TTRPG created specifically for this channel. Uh, if you'd like to go back and check out the first one, which was a very much a traditional slasher killer at the summer camp. And I'm sure there will be more. And uh, in future, there will be more kind of in a uh, continuity about the zombie apocalypse. Uh, and then come back tomorrow and check us out for uh, continuing adventures in our Call of Cthulhu 1920s classic uh, continuity. And I think Shanks, you're going to be joining us for that one. I'm going to be there. Awesome sauce. So cool. A uh, great way to spend Easter, Easter is to you know, fiddle around with Cthulhu. So cool. Yeah. So we're going to say uh, goodbye to the folks on YouTube and then we'll come back and uh, Meg will start up and we'll go right over there so we can continue the fun. So cool. So bye everyone on YouTube. Bye. Au revoir. Bye. bye.